We're good. We're in. We're going to try this. Take two. I don't know if anybody's going to come back. Currently, there's no one here. We'll wait. Got all day. I hope that turns off the mic. I don't know what these buttons do. How is uh, how is the audio now? We just had to uh, turn off the stream and turn it back on. Because that's what you do. If something doesn't work, you shut it off. You turn it back on. Your phone frigs up. You turn it off. Turn it back on. So it says audio is great. Sounds better. Well, that's good. Because all I did is restart it. And uh, somebody says that they're getting some crack a Um Hopefully. Uh, let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here we are. Great. Uh, the finale of the Great British Bake Off. Come on, TDM. Don't you have Netflix, man? I've already watched all seven series except for the last three or four they haven't put out yet. Everybody loves little Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry. Ah, anyways. Uh, oh, this is a brand new one. See, TDM, I don't have the television. I don't have what they call the telly. I think that's how you guys say it. <laughs> Uh, all I have is Netflix, so I have to wait. So don't uh, give me any spoilers and let me know who wins. Anyways, um, yeah, drinking from the old Husky Mom mug. That's what I am, a Husky Mom. My Husky's not here today. She's home. She stayed home. Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, yeah, and I figured out the Super Chat thing. It's Windows, or yeah, Windows. Uh, YouTube has changed their platform, so we have this new creator studio, and it's a freaking disaster. Fortunately, they allow us to go back to the old one, uh, which works out pretty good, because you can go back to the old one, and you can actually find stuff. What's up, Mrs. O? Do you know where the paintbrush is? Do I know where your paintbrush is? Yeah. All right, I know where your paintbrush is. I can't find that. I was wondering if you saw it. No, ma'am. Wow. You know where it is, right where you left it. That's what we tell the children. Unless you moved it on. I didn't move it on you. Trust me. Yeah, you, you got trust issues. The conspiracy. Uh, Al Gore. What's it got stuck, man? <laughs> yeah, in the previous live stream there, in the first couple minutes, I did give honorable mention to my new favorite channel, Neutral Drop. Cameraman, stuck man, down in Brooklyn. Uh, I think they own a scrap metal processing facility down there. Language is a little salty. So if you have sensitive ears, uh, you may not want to watch. Um, but it is funny as crap. And their channel is going to. You found it. Yep. Fantastic. Right where you put it. All right. You can't hide it on me. I forgive you. Love you. Love you. Anywho, they're down there in Brooklyn. And if uh, you guys don't watch Neutral Drop, you should. But if you can't take a little bit of. Uh, a lot of bit of salty language, then don't, you know, just don't go watch. Don't go give them a thumbs down just because they're dropping a few bombs here and there. Uh, great, uh, great channel though. What? I'm sorry. What? I gotta get down. Okay. I'm right back. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Good luck. Um, anywho, uh, neutral drops in the house. Are they in the house? Neutral drop is not a pin. There is neutral drop right there. <laughs> Cameraman, we're just talking about you, cameraman. <laughs> uh, he's my new role model. Uh, guy's got some pretty insane stories. Fantastic channel, and he's straight up in here. <laughs> I want to go visit him. Um, I tell you guys what, next time I'm down visiting Keith down in Staten Island, uh, I have contacted uh, Neutral Drop. AKA cameraman, send him an email. Uh, I gotta send him another one. I want to arrange a time so I can go down and perhaps maybe take a ride with Stuntman. Uh, I think that would be a fantastic time. And uh, yeah, I got Steve there from Simsley Diagnostics. He was over here from the UK. I thought him and Keith were gonna go over there to uh, Brooklyn and uh, check him out when he was down here. But anywho, great channel. <laughs> I can't stop watching. They just, everything you've ever wanted to do to a rent a car, they do it. So, anyways, <laughs> I just think it would be fun. And I want to hear cameraman say, what's it got, Erico? <laughs> Something like that. 
Uh, so what do you think, uh, new to, or, uh, cameraman? Is it a date? If I uh, come down, can we meet up and do a little, uh, you know, neutral dropping? Do what you do best. Hey, Stuntman's in here. Oh, yeah. There's, there's Stuntman. So Stuntman's the driver on the uh, neutral drop show. <laughs> but their, their YouTube channel is going to far surpass uh, mine here very shortly, which is, you know, not, I mean, it's a, they're, they're going to go big. Let's just put it that way. Leon's in here from Budget. Like, I really don't have much to talk about tonight, folks. Um, see, there I go. Watching Neutral Drop and everybody's folks. All right, folks. <laughs> All right. So we got we got the approval. When we get down, it makes me want to go down and say it is right in the middle of uh, deer season. So uh, I, I won't be leaving during deer season. That's for sure. Uh, I've had some family issues, not, uh, you know, nothing horrible but uh i've had to kind of stick around home and all that stuff so just some things going on haven't been getting out um uh hunting season's off to a good start uh I took one doe with bow and arrow and then uh passed up about six different bucks so far so still waiting rut's gonna be coming in here pretty soon and it should be pretty dang fun oh steve you'll fly back from the uk if we're uh if we're going to go visit neutral drop, oh boy, I may take you up on that, Steve. I will let you know. Of course, I'll know weeks in advance before I go visit Keith. So um, uh, if we're uh, if we're going down to see cameraman, stuntman, I'll give you a heads up, Steve, if you want to fly back from the UK. And we'll all go over and we'll have a good time and probably wreck some stuff. Smitty, you should come up. That's right up your alley. We'll all go. We'll have a great time. <laughs> Yeah, well, TST will be in. Uh, we'll be down in Terrytown, so we'll be right in that neck of the woods uh, when that comes around. But that's not till the spring. Uh, either way, I'm sure they're not not too far away. I mean, it's about a five hour drive for me. Totally worth it, though. Uh, and maybe you don't know, but if you go check out their channel, they just put out a video. Uh, cameraman made a zero emissions vehicle. <laughs> it takes the EGR valve to a whole new level. Yeah, March 21st, that's when TST is. Um, uh, where's the Dub J? Dub J sits at home. Uh, haven't been doing much with it. It's just been sitting. Um, yeah, see, Smitty, you drive five hours, I'll drive the other five hours. Boom. Not a big deal. We'll make it. We'll have fun. Uh, where in Terrytown? I don't know. How, I don't think Terrytown's that big. Uh, where is it, Kuba? Where do they have the? It's at the. Is it the Marriott? Maybe. Um, it's not. I, I don't know. It's in Terrytown. I, it's at one of the the big motels there. The No Tell Motel. It's down the street from the diner. I know that. But anywho, what was I saying? Yeah, we got one deer in the freezer, which kind of. It's been pretty warm out, so it kind of st stinks. I mean, it's been a good year, but it's it's warm. Neutral drop said, cameraman said he'd drive five. You don't want to come up here, cameraman. We got nothing. We got nothing on you. You come up here, it's just, oh, here's crickets, rednecks. Uh, you know, I mean, unless you think we can get our hands on a car, <laughs> bring stuntman. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see. Anywho, changing time and chains on an 09 Canyon hard five cylinder. Uh, not horrible. I mean, you got to pull the O pan, so you got to pull the front axle if it's four wheel drive. Um, so yeah, yeah, neutral drop this uh Ford Ranger. Like, I want to neutral drop everything. I'm having a really hard time test driving customers' cars. <laughs> um, but uh, oh, uh, white tail. We don't we don't have mildew here. It's all white tail. I have a picture of one, but it's probably inappropriate for the YouTube. So I better because we process all our own deer. So according to the deer fat survey that I've taken, it's going to be a hard winter. That's why I shot to see about two inches of fat. 
Oh, no, stunt man. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, when you're good, you're good, stunt man. I mean, it's just, <laughs> that's the way it is. <laughs> that's a great channel. And uh, I'd like to get a hold of you, uh, stunt man or cameraman, because I want to talk to you about some YouTube stuff, some mistakes that I made early on uh, that I wish I would have changed. Um, and I know you guys own a business, and uh, I just don't want you to get into the same, I don't want to say I'm in a predicament, but in a similar predicament where it gets, you know, uh, pretty annoying because your channel is going to grow and it's going to grow fast as you've already seen. So uh, I do want to, I would, I would love to talk to you uh, just to make sure you're on the up and up as far as, you know, knowing where your channel is going to go and uh, you know, what's going to, what potentially could happen in the future, I guess. I'm not a analyst or anything. I just want to give you some friendly advice that wish somebody gave me early on. So Go put out the fire, Schmitty. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's, I'll just kind of go through some of these. Like I said, I have no agenda today. My agenda is just sitting around waiting for Mrs. O. Oh, what the, man, I thought I seen something here and I missed it. Unfortunately, these things zip by a little too quick. Um, yeah, no problem, cameraman. I'll shoot you another email. Don't delete it this time. Or they say New York, forget about it. <laughs> right? I don't know. Do I drink Corona beer? Nope. Not a Corona guy. Yeah, yeah. So Kuba, the slow chat thing. So uh YouTube changed. I can't I can't find that now. Um I don't know what it's saying. I found the the super the super chat thing. I was able to get that turned off, but uh, the garden the garden's all tilled under. That was done a uh, while ago, so we've had several pretty hard frosts so far. Is there any wild pigs around here? <laughs> Just the ones you see at the Walmart. Uh, other than that, no. And if there is, it is actually illegal in the state of New York to shoot the wild Eurasian boar. So, yep. Uh, yeah, I did get a deer, John. We just talked about that. You might be coming in a little bit late. Uh, Chris over there, at Science and Diagnostics. He got a uh, buck, and he sent me a picture of that. So he's got some meat in the freezer. And we also have a new 12-year-old uh, hunter this year. So uh, my oldest boy, Gavin, he's able to bow hunt with me. And um, he had uh, his first experience. Uh, he, he didn't get the he, he like you know elected not to shoot as a, a small as a yearling uh, came in, but it was pretty cool. You know he got it. It was it was close. You know ten yards, and uh, so he got to experience the you know the adrenaline drop. <laughs> got the got the shakes and the sweats and the whole deal. So uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, what do we got? So what's happening around the shop is uh, well I've got the Rapid Ranger behind me. That's a I think it's a ninety eight. Pretty clean. It's got the big three hoe in it and uh, had uh, evap leak, excuse me, had to put a uh, fuel filler neck in it and a canister vent valve, uh, super rusty. Hey, what's up, homie? And um, got that taken care of. The canister vent valve actually functioned, but it was like that big around just from rust. It's weird. The truck is super clean, except like canister vent valves, rusty. Some odd things are rusty. Um, uh, it just misses out. I uh, did that and then the fuel filler neck, which kind of stunk to get because this thing is a step side. So it was, I think it was still valuable from Ford, but it was like darn near 300 bucks. Uh, I ended up finding one even aftermarket. They didn't show it like through NAP or Advance. Uh, I got it through like fuelfillerneck.com or so it was like a hundred dollar bill uh, by the time I got the ride. So uh, that showed up, that fit perfectly. I've gotten filler necks from that company before and have been... Uh, Pretty good. And then we got a, uh, what's up there? Kia Sedona 08, super clean. And that one has got a new engine in it. What's up? Hey, Lay. Gosh, myself. Here, you cut yourself? What are you doing? Cutting this cut. What's up, Bill? Right. You win? Yeah. You did? Mm -hmm. All right. Woo woo. Five to three. Five to three. Schmolt. No. Yeah. My live stream. Oh. Yeah. 
Uh, don't, man, I cut you, cut you deep. You just cut you. Yeah, she, she did just cut me. Yeah, yeah, yeah did. look at my face. I'll have it old. No, that's not no, old. That, that's that just happened. Yeah, you, you just saw her cut me, right? Yeah. Go, go call Child Protective Services. Okay. All right. Let's see. see? Oh, that's old. Yeah. Ah. yeah, call. I can make yeah. it fresh if you want. Yeah, it's 911, this lady. What you go <laughs> crazy. All right. What were we just talking about? Oh, yeah, the Kia up there, that's getting an engine or has just got an engine. So that it was put in, started it yesterday. Uh, Jason finished it today. So that baby's all done and runs well. 104,000 miles on a used engine. I uh, got a pretty good deal on it. Now, the original engine. Uh, it came in with cam timing codes, uh, bank two. And so it was a front bank. Let me just see what's happening here. Just make sure I ain't missing something obvious. That's what they were saying, Keith, but we restarted it. Check a check, microphone check one, two. I don't know if that's, I don't know why the microphone's clicking. How is it? folks uh yeah it works they can hear me i don't sound like max headroom do i uh anywho so yeah the kia came in cam timing codes i checked it out the front bank so this bank two was um i think it was fully advanced 40 degrees something like that it's run like garbage you know think of barely run uh i checked it out i pulled course you can't get that solenoid out all the way uh, i had all my directional controls and stuff and i determined whether or not you know the solenoid was stuck open or what have you so i, I pull it out as far as i can so i can look at it look at the mechanical movement of it and it ate one of its own screens uh so one of the you know the cam timing solenoids you guys have probably seen me change them before seen them on you know various other cars they have little screens around them well evidently one of the screens came loose and it got wedged in there and the only way to take this thing out is pull the intake whatever. So I gave him a quote on the uh, camp timing solenoid and, you know, just r, &R intake. I think it was like 2.8 hours or whatever it was, plus, you know, $150 solenoid. And then, uh, you know, of course, just doing preliminary checks, you know, I checked the oil and this thing is almost empty. You know, it's like put four quarts of oil in it and it only had 3000 and some miles on it since his last change. I guess this, the old engine uh, would just gobble in oil uh, he wanted a personal guarantee, so to speak, or some vote of confidence that replacing the solenoid is going to take care of everything, uh, which until, you know, we replaced it, I couldn't, you know, 100% tell you. I know, it, you know, the engine didn't crash, it didn't smash the valves, but the solenoid was jammed open. And that piece of screen that was stuck in it, even though when I opened it, I just, you know, I just couldn't pull it out. It was, it was a wedge rip in the top part. So the fact that it was, you know, an oil guzzler, Plus, you know, the little cam timing deal. He wanted to take the money that he would have put into to that and just put it into a different engine. So, anywho, that's uh, that's why that one's getting an engine. And then we've got another engine over there for a 2011 Dodge Caravan, and that one's all done. And then we've got another car out back, a 2014 Ford Escape with a big 1.8, no, 2.0 turbo eco boost. Uh, went eco boom. So I've got a new engine over there for that. That's going to get put in tomorrow. So it's been like junkyard swapping around here. Uh, so that's that just a bunch of engine jobs. And then I don't know what else got some manifolds to do exhaust manifolds to do on a, I think a, I don't know, Oh three, maybe F one fifty old by style heritage. Uh, so not too bad about a cut and torch action. And then I uh, got a uh, Nissan of some sort out there, uh, no crank. Uh, of course, it blew the trainee cooler, I guess. So you guys probably know what happened to that. Uh, trainee and uh, coolant exchange, and then you get all the uh, you know coolant in the radiator or all the coolant in the transmission, and then it shorts out the transmission control module, then blows the fuse, and then you know now you're hoofing it. Uh, anyhow, if you don't know about that, go check out Keith over at New Level Auto. I think he's done a video on that. Uh, he had a, a, an older Pathfinder, you know, like an 08, 09, something like that. Pathfinder, you know, nuked the trainee cooler, you know, of course, blew the transmission ECM fuse and, you know, the rest of the history. They're basically junk at that point. 
uh, you know, you need a transmission, you need a, you know, radiator, it needs to be super flushed, you know, you might better just take it to the crusher, but uh, what else we got? Where's Vinny? Vinny stopped in today. Yeah, come on, Keith, you know about that video. Post the link to it so the people can see, because I probably won't do a video on it, because I probably won't even pull it inside. Uh, we'll go out and check it out. Maybe I will. I don't know. The guy that said a blue brake line is getting it off his trailer. So we'll probably have to pull it in, at least see if it's, you know, absolute toilet. But but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we see. You never know. Uh, it's weird. Some people are having some mic issues. Others are not. What if it's like an old Nintendo game? It just needs to be blown out. Let's see if that works. Ooh, am I hired? Yeah, that's what I said. Huh? Any better? Ha, <laughs> tricked you. <laughs> eh, Steve says it's good, and I believe everything Steve says. <laughs> I'll try again, Kuba. I believe everything Steve says because he says I'm awesome. Uh... <laughs> Holy smokes, 1.6k people up in here, and I've got no content and nothing to uh nothing to really talk about. So I'm just gonna troll the comments for a little bit here and see uh, uh where's the G Pat? Uh at home, they're getting pretty ratty tattered. Oh, so got me a T pin up in here from earlier. Worked on a transmission for the local Chrysler dealership today. And uh, I did a video on it for you folks, so you guys uh, may get to enjoy that tomorrow. What was it? A 2000, I don't know, 2011 Chevrolet 2500 uh, with the 6.6 Duramax in it. And uh, it needs to be turned down a bit. Uh, well, my mic's not on on my end. Let me, let me, just, let me just check a little something. Some. Let me go to my mixing studio. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Let me just see. Hold on, folks. What the frig? Device, system, sound, Google Chrome. Let me. Do, I'm just going to turn some of these down. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that helps at all. But uh, Alan Jones says I'm good, and I trust everything he says. What the hell were we just talking about? Oh yeah, the Chevrolet came in from the Chevrolet or from the Chrysler dealer. Uh, evidently had a slew of codes in it for the transmission, so they went and slapped a brand new Allison in it. And when they were all done, evidently it did not shift or it was stuck in limp mode. It had a code 2669er in it for the high side driver of the transmission control module. And you guys will see in the video, but I'll spoil it for you. I won't spoil it. Go watch the video. It should be out possibly tomorrow. Um, so that was that. It was a pretty pretty easy fix. Hopefully, they did not just put a $7,000 Allison transmission in it for this problem that I fixed because the problem that I fixed was a no parts required type fix. So you're going to know where I'm going with that. But uh, no, no, they didn't forget to program it, Kevin. The transmission control module is outside of the transmission on these you know you have to do some adaptive resets and stuff but uh regardless it was just uh the you know didn't have any voltage coming from the high side driver at the transmission so uh but oh people want to know how the kitchen is coming along well i can't take you in there because you guys are on a little webcam thingy and i don't think i can transfer from my phone i'll do an update on that uh, it's coming along nice. We have a, a guy. We got uh, Mrs. O is a whole custom kitchen in there. We had him build us uh, uh, some cabinets. And so she had all custom cabinets built in there out of some pine that we got from the auction. And uh, It looks really nice. It's turning out really, really well. And he's making the countertop right now because we had, uh, what's he making? Making that out of poplar, uh, butcher block style. So he's making the whole countertop and island thing. I don't know. That's her deal. Uh, she's doing that. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think I can TDM. She'd have to come out here and, uh, all that stuff. So you're on, you guys are on a short tether. just like me. Watch that's as far as you can go. That's it. That's all you got. You can see the Kia. You can see my mug. 
you can see the ranger you can almost oh you see some rock auto magnets you can see in the back room uh this is all yeah so everybody wants to know about your kitchen that's what i'm working on i can't stand here and talk to you i told them I, they're on a short tether just like me yeah as far as they well, can go the big reveal the big reveal yeah right <laughs> I won't drop you, don't worry. Okay. All right, good luck. Right. There's children in there. Okay, any chance of a snowplow video this year? It's funny you mention that. I was just checking out the dog. <laughs> That's what I call it, the snow dog. And uh, I'd like to do, uh, I mean, a snowplow video is, frankly, let's face it, it's pretty boring. You're just pushing back the bankings, you know. I just got to use pushing back the bankings in a sentence. Oh, yeah. yeah, pushing back the bankings. <laughs> Uh, anyways, <laughs> push back to Bankins. I would think uh, a snowplow video would be pretty boring. You know, perhaps I'll do like my one year review of owning the snow dog, uh, great plow, you know, stainless steel. And, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I like it. It's a great plow. It's a trip plow. It's just a good plow. I looked at three different brands before I decided on the one that I bought. My only thing I don't like about it, or my only, I guess, you know, complaint, I use my claw hands here, would be the front hitch uh, where the snow plow mounts on to. Now, you know, you compare it to a minute mount, like on a, a Myers or a Western, it's not even close. I mean, it's decent. And once you learn the plow and the biggest thing is you have to have it on a level piece of ground. You got on level ground, you know, you can click, you know, you can bang right into it. You're good to go. However, it does hang down low. So like the other day I was bombing through a cornfield, uh, cut cornfield wasn't destroying no crops but uh you know going through a cornfield and you know you hit ruts from where the uh, combine went through you know it does hit it does hit the plow frame but with that being said i will say that the plow frame fit absolutely beautifully so kind of a catch-22 i know some guys uh take them off from their trucks but it's you know i'm not going to do that I'll just you know just leave the plow frame on it's fine so Oh, what's up with the refrigerator? Oh, that's the old one from the office. I'm going to give that to my sister for, she, she owns a gym and, uh, you know, she'll put it in there for, I don't know what they put in it, whatever they want. Or it goes in her office at her gym. So where they put, uh, what do I want to say? Like a protein. I think some guys, cause it's a meathead gym, you know, where everybody goes and they get swole. There ain't no cardio up in that place. So uh what's my opinion on start stop systems I, I don't really have an opinion on it bruce they're relatively simple systems to work on i think they're all made by the same company or most of them are that you see on like the domestics and asians so i don't know you just don't really see many issues with them uh do i still buy it from rock auto on occasion and it depends on what it is and uh, no i don't have a waste oil heater but I buy it from Rock Auto on occasion uh, if, number one, if time allows, and number two, if it's a part that I don't think I'll ever have to warranty, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't get, like, you know, a head gasket set or something from there because being a Napa Auto Care Center, not a sponsor, I tend to buy most of my parts from Napa, so that way there I can give my customers a two-year, 24,000 Napa peace of mind warranty. And yes, that's true. And that's how I get, you know, if I have to have a labor claim or, you know, something goes awry, I know I'm covered. Napa's got my back, even though they're not a sponsor. Uh, that's just one of the benefits from, uh, you know, being a Napa Auto Care Center and being a customer of a place that is a Napa Auto Care Center, not a sponsor. So. Uh, psh, psh. Did I make a video of putting on hitch? The the front mount hitch for the snowplow, I did not. Uh, I didn't, no, and I don't know why. I probably should have, I probably could have recorded that. I do have a gigantic snow dog sticker though. I'm pretty sure it's in my locker, so. I gotta put it on somewhere, it's gonna look awesome. There it is. <laughs> I gotta put that on the toolbox. <laughs> Bringing out the dog. <laughs> Yeah, I just got that sticker. They sent it to you for free. It was weird. I won't tell you. Well, yeah, you have to probably figure it out. <laughs> Do I watch Scotty Kilmer? Only when I need a good laugh. 
Uh, the guy's genius, in my opinion. Uh, might be a you know completely terrible hack mechanic and has me banned from his channel, so I can't comment. But uh, he has created quite a following. Uh, he can slew the BS out of his mouth just effortlessly uh, to seemingly answer everybody's question, uh, which is just just mind boggling to me. But you know he you know he bankrolls millions of dollars a year from YouTube. Uh, good businessman. He's got a good business plan and he is working it. And the people eat it right up. And I think it's fantastic. I give the guy a big fat thumbs up for what he's doing. Uh, you know, when I let him work on my car, you know, not a chance. But anyways, you know, you can't you can't hate him for lining his pockets. And the people just keep clicking. And he loves Toyotas and hates everything else. And <laughs> it's just, he's doing it right. We'll just leave it at that. He's doing it right. So... <laughs> Oh, what else we got here? Oh, do you use fluid film on your snow plow to keep snow from sticking? So when I parked it this fall or spring, yeah, that's when we quit using it is in the spring. Uh, what I did because I've only got, well, I got two barns at home, didn't have enough room to store it inside. So I took it off the truck, uh, pressure washed it, put it on a pallet. Then I can move it around with a uh, tractor, you know, pallet forks. And then before I covered it up with the tarp and stuff, I sprayed it with Crown because that's what I had available. I had two cans of Crown, I douched the whole thing down and away we go. I think Crown raised a little bit of hell with the rubber uh, foil on top of it. It gave it some wrinkles, um, but it's neither here nor there. It'll still work. So that's what I did to store it. And I also tried, I, I was taking care of my, I've got a seven foot rotor tiller that goes behind my John Deere. And I took that off, of course, the. Uh, the tines are all scoured and bright and shiny. So be, I put that on a you know pallet and stuff so I can move that too before I tarped it up. And I, I sprayed that with WD-40 because, well, that's what I had in my hand at the time. And that seems to hold up quite well. I was pretty surprised as far as rust prevention. You know, of course, it's just sitting outside. You know, it's covered up. But I looked at the tines the other day and they were still bright and shiny. And I haven't used it since uh, the spring when I was putting in food plots. Uh, am I a farmer? I'm not a farmer. I wish I was a farmer, but. The only thing I farm is crops from a deer. Uh, roast Eric the car guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything to uh, uh, roast him about. You know, he does his thing. I do my thing. Everybody does their own thing. So, Chris Fix thoughts. My thoughts. What do you guys want me to talk about? Every other YouTuber out there. Uh, Chris Fix is an absolute genius. Uh, you know, same as Scotty. Fantastic. Uh, you know, businessman, you know, also, you know, pulling in millions of dollars from YouTube. Uh, and it's great. You know, he's, he's consistent with what he does also has me banned from his channel too, which is fantastic. <laughs> Him and Scotty both, uh, either case there's no, no hide off my back, but, uh, has a great plan, you know, does good videos, educational, uh, to the people and it applies to the majority, you know, where our channel doesn't, because let's say, you know, yeah, we look at this, car and it needs you know a tcm and it needs to be reprogrammed well that doesn't apply to the majority most people don't care you know then they're not going to fix it themselves but if i did videos on you know how to super clean your windshield or you know super flush your coolant or super you know fill in the blank super change your brakes uh perhaps that would apply i can't bring my channel to that level i just it's just not what i do so you guys just see what i do i fix cars and we move on so but anyways uh I think he has a great channel in my opinion and is working, you know, made a plan, works plan. He's doing it well. Oh, oh crap. He's going by. What do we got here? Oh gosh. These are, man, I wish I could figure out the slow chat thing again. Uh, Pine Hollow. I'd like to slap Ivan upside the head. I mean, the kid is absolutely brilliant. Why he's messing around, frigging on stupid cars is beyond me. He could be out making real money, doing scientific stuff. Uh, he's a genius, bottom line, in my opinion. Ivan is absolutely brilliant. Why he wastes his intelligent wastes is why he wastes is why he wastes plural his intelligence on stupid nuts and bolts that drive down the road i don't know 
It's got to be in his blood because that's the only way you would do it. Yeah. What do we got here? Would I buy a Tesla? Probably not. I mean, I don't know anything about them, so I, I wouldn't, you know. I'd buy a new, uh, new Tundra. Oh, we already we already talked about neutral drop channel favorite channel makes me smile. It doesn't even say the name. <laughs> uh, Ivan's dad is a scientist, and his mother, and he is. They're both. They're the whole family is all brilliant. Oh, thoughts on Keith L1 auto diagnostic and programming. Now there is a guy you want to stay away from. <laughs> Just kidding, Keith. Great channel. Just like Steve, simply diagnostic. Cuba. Uh, all the people I have as moderators. They wouldn't be moderators unless there was some love. See that? Is that a, I don't know what's that my heart's on. I just did that symbol. <laughs> uh, uh, TDM 4x4, that's the channel you don't want to watch. Uh, he's a Brit, I think. Is, are you British, Irish? I don't know. He's over on that side of the ocean. Loves his Land Rovers. Hates Jeeps. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, what we got? Northern Irish. Yeah, because he's a ginger also. Good hustle. Good hustle. What are you hustling for? children, they're going to knock over my stuff. Oh, well, tie them up. Do you want some zip ties? Them kids won't move when they're zip tied. Trust me. <laughs> uh, anyways, what else do we have? Yeah, no running in the hallway. I'll tell you next time she comes out, Corey, I'll reach over. Whoosh, give her a little pat. Let her know. <laughs> Uh, do I have an opinion on Hyundai's? Not really. I'm not a great guy. That's like a, that's a perfect Scotty Kilmer question because he would answer that like boom, 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 boom. You'd be out buying a 98 Toyota Celica in like 30 seconds of video. I don't have an opinion. I work on all kinds of junk, so I don't have an opinion on them. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's my opinion. I don't. I, I mean, I have a lot. Of, opinions are like a holes. Everybody's got one. Some of them stink. So I don't have an opinion on them. I mean, because that's this very open ended question. You know, what, what high Hyundai's are we talking about? Like early nineties Hyundai's or like today's Hyundai's? Cause so they're all junk. Yeah. When they're broke, they're all junk. I don't care. There's a Hyundai Kia on the lift right now. Where are we at here? Would I buy a Tacoma? Yeah, I'd, I'd buy a Tacoma for sure. Uh, I'm a Toyota guy, Toyota, Honda, Kia, Hyundai. <laughs> I like all of them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd buy a Tacoma. Uh, probably more for, like, a beater, in my own opinion, uh, because from the Tacomas that I've driven, which has been quite a few of them, as they come in for service and stuff like that, I don't like the seats in them because you, you, it's, all the Tacomas sit the same way. You know, you sit down low with your feet straight out. And I'm an old guy. I'm 40 years old now, so I could complain about stuff like that. I don't like... I just don't like their seat position there. I would buy one. If I bought one, it'd be a single cab short box, you know, and I would just off-road it and just, you know, beat the balls off it. So, uh, deer ticks, a bad problem. They are bullshire, buffshire. <laughs> they, uh, we've had a lot of ticks this year because we have a lot of ticks every year. Uh, take ticks off me every year. Usually not bitten in. Uh, I only had one bite in. I think it was this spring. I had to go get the old, was it Texas, Texas, Texas high clean or whatever it is at the old bullseye at the old lime and the old lime flowing through my veins. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, deer ticks, you got to watch the deer ticks, deer ticks, dog ticks. You know, if you live in the woods, you're just going to get them. It's just a fact of life. Uh, you're going to see them. They're going to get on you. And, uh, no, I haven't seen any antler deer ticks yet, but these are all antlerless. What was my first shop? This is my first shop. SMA since 2005. Of course, I've been in the business my whole life, but uh, that's that. Have we had any frost yet? We've had several good hard frosts. What have we got here? Hmm. 
Yep, that's what I say. I didn't build it, I didn't buy it, and I didn't break it. But we're slowing down a little bit, coming into uh, uh, a little bit of a, I don't want to say a slower season. This week slowed down a little. You know, I've only got, I think we're only a week out. So, you know, I consider that slowing down. And it's kind of odd. I mentioned this in my video today that I've been working outside. I've been working on the ground. I've been working on the short lift. How is it that I hire two people? I own the place, but I'm the one who doesn't have a lift now. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. So I'm contemplating of putting a lift in this bay. So I've got the little short, short, short lift, short, short, short. If you dare wear short shorts. I think that was an old jingle for uh, Nair. You know, the hair leg removal stuff when you're a kid. If you dare wear short shorts. Remember them commercials? They were pretty schmutty back in the day. I'm thinking of putting a lift in here. Unfortunately, no matter what this looks like on video, these bays are small. These are very short bays. They're only, I think, uh, 25 foot long, 28, 12 by 28 each bay. So they're small bays. And the problem is, if I put in another lift, you can see that this lift currently, you know, comes right up, we'll say, to the crack in the floor. It goes wall to wall. And if I put in another one, that's only going to leave about a six inch space between the two lifts, you know, assuming I use a lift like that. Now, I can't use a uh, floor plate lift, you know, a clear top floor plate lift because these bays are also sloped because they, uh, back before it was illegal in the state of New York, uh, they, we used to have floor drains. So the floor drains are now filled, but the floors are still sloped. So what I have thought, I thought about putting in a four post lift in this bay. Uh, I think Ben Pack makes some that are narrower, let's say 99 inches wide, 200 inches long, which I'll have, you know, plenty of room for. So I'm thinking about uh, that and uh, I've contemplated like, you know, asymmetrical lift where I can offset it slightly, but it, it just becomes a huge pain in the ass to try to walk between the two beams that are there essentially the rest of your life. Uh, does my boy with the orange pants want to be a mechanic? Hopefully not. I hope they uh, all become well-educated and can do something better than what I've done and can, you know, take it easy type thing. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, my oldest boy, he's more, he is more hands-on, uh, likes to work, uh, hard worker in that regards of uh, wanting to do, is, well, put it this way, he's not, he's not afraid of laborious tasks. Where my middle child, boy, he will, he's, he's quite intelligent and he will lead the task. He will lead the program. He will come up with a plan but he don't want to put these on. Uh, he will dictate, delegate, and tell you how it needs to be done in the most efficient way to do it, and usually pretty accurately. So uh, I'm not sure where he's uh, uh, where he's going to end up on the food chain. But he is he is quite quite uh, quite a sharp kid. Uh, I don't know where he gets that from. Uh, both Vanessa and I were pretty crappy in school. Uh, you know, both of us were flunkies. So, uh, but. My middle child and my youngest uh, girl, they both do extremely well in school. Um, my oldest boy, he doesn't want to be in school. He just wants to be out hunting and fishing and probably going to drive Chevrolet. That's the only thing I could think. So, right? Whatever you say. Talk about Gavin. Whatever you say, dear. All right, she agrees. <laughs> right? I agree with it. That Gavin would rather be out hunting, fishing, probably going to drive Chevrolet. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah, figured. Uh, two wrongs make it right. <laughs> yeah, that's proof right there, Schmitty. We got two wrongs. We made a right. We made a couple rights. We made three rights. I mean, I love all my children. Don't get me wrong. Just one of them, one out of the three, just happens to not like school. His motivator is uh, if he wants to go hunting or fishing or buy a Chevrolet, then he has to do well at school. And he also, he really loves sports. So he plays a lot of sports and he is in the grade now that if you don't do well in school, if you fail uh, two subjects uh, below 65 average, then you automatically get taken off from the team. However, in my household, if you fail one subject, mom, pa take you off the team. So that is the motivator because if he knew that he could fail two, he would at least fail one. How do I know that? Because that's exactly what I would do. So That's my thoughts. How, why are we talking about this? <laughs> uh, I'd rather not talk about that TDM. 
if you don't mind. How's Mrs. O's uh, Sedona? Uh, it's doing well. <laughs> However, I'll leave the story uh, for her if she comes back out and has some time. I'll let you. I'll let her tell you what she's done to the Sedona. Uh, other than uh, her, what I call mishap, uh, it's been doing. It's been doing well. Oh man, you got you had your um, uh, dirt bike put up for a hawk, huh? Yikes. Oh, no, it's nothing to be sorry about, uh, TDM. It's just, you know. Uh, where are we at here? Why no more Honda for Mrs. O? Uh, because, uh, because we wanted to trade in and trade up. How's Hannah's car doing? She's still driving it. She's got herself a full-time job making bank. Uh, I tell you what, if any of you are contemplating a career and you live in the United States, and I don't know how it is outside the U.S., and you have the ability to deal with people or the want to, and you want to become an RN, uh, she came out of school making darn good money. Uh, Sign-on bonuses, the whole spiel. And she's getting married, I think, not next month. She's getting married during deer season, which just pissed me right off. Uh, but she did have it at nighttime, so that's good. Uh, but I, had, I gave her a good stern look and, uh, you know, I had to give her talking to. And, uh, but anywho, uh, she's doing well, making making good money. Uh, it was very hard work for her. You know, she had to put in a lot of time, you know, in school. But she came out on top. She passed her board. She has her RN, and boom, she got a job uh, working in the department. I don't know if they call them departments, but... Uh, working in the department that she wanted to, which was great. Yeah, yeah, she's getting married already. Uh, next month, I think. It's October, November, yeah. She's getting married soon. I think she's getting married real quick here. Um, has the boss, Rich from the boss grad, ever been in my shop? He has not. Nope, he's a Canadian fella. Wouldn't mind meeting him, because if you're not dirty, then you're not rich. That's his thing. Uh, let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tim Basco, you married a nurse. Well, Tim, if you're, you got a chainsaw picture there. If you're in the woods, you probably a good thing you're going to be married to a nurse, especially if you're a tree chopper. Uh, Eric got one, 2008 Chevrolet Silverado with a fuel pump control module, but have another 08 without one. Did they make one without one under the rear tire? Not that I know of. Um, as long as they're both gas engines, I can't say I've seen one without a uh, fuel pump control module. Uh, let's see. Uh, my thoughts on snap on scanners. I haven't played it enough with the new ones to give my thought, but I can give you my thoughts on the ones in the past. Uh, they do what they say they will do. Uh, you have support in the United States of America if you need to call somebody. Uh, as cocky and arrogant as they are on the phone, you still have support. Uh, in my opinion, they're severely overpriced for what they are. And in comparison to, let's say, you know, any of your Chinese scan tools, launch, Altel, any, you know, Foxwell, whoever out there, Top Dawn, you know, all of them. But we'll just say like Altel and Launch, ones I have a lot of experience with. I would take one of those any day of the week over any snap on scan tool. I don't care which one it is, uh, you know, just because they have more better pirated software. <laughs> Simple as that. Oh, and the fact that they're about one tenth of the price. So other than that, they do exactly what they say they will do, you know, as advertised. Um, Drug test too? No, Tim, don't send me another drug test. I mean, I mean, obviously, I could pass the drug test. No, seriously, I could have already proved it to you guys. Once we already peed into a cup once live on film. Uh, <laughs> do I think the Diagon 4 is good for the advanced home gamer? I do, you know, for the price of the tool. But I think if I was to buy one, now I used my Diagon the other day. I had to put a, a wind module in a 2012 RAM. 
and put it in, programmed it with a Diagon, you know, boom, you're done. You know, you couldn't do that with a Snap-on. So there's a good example. You have a, what is it, $700 scan tool versus, let's say, a $15,000 Zeus, a little handheld jobby, boom, done. You put in a wind module, program the keys out the door. Oh, and redo the TPMS sensors. But, uh, yeah, that's that. But, you know, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Uh, if I, well, that's what I was going to say. If I was going to buy the Diagon, I would probably buy the 431, like the bigger tablet. Like, was it like a seven inch or a nine inch? Uh, same software and stuff. So, yeah. So, Steve said he was using Keith's Diagon and he loved it. Uh, yeah, it's a Pro or the Pro Mini. I don't know what it is. I think I have one. Just a minute. Let me go look. I'll tell you what the model number is. Oh, gosh. What a pee. Come over here. Get them off the shelf. So, what we're talking about, folks. All right, folks. Erico here. <laughs> so, that's the die gun. That's the size of that. And you can do selfies like you know, full duck lip if you want to do the duck lip or if you're a girl and they like always like to show their necklace, you know, the, you know, they're like, oh, my eyes are up here. That's the size of that. It's the size of a cell phone. And it's 732. So that's that. That's the die gunner. Great little tool. Good tool for the money. Uh, all Chinese, you know, so if you're expecting support in the U.S., forget about it because you're not going to get it. Uh, you got to do support uh, via email, uh, which is fine, you know, um, great little tool. And then this one in this box is the X431 5 Series, same exact software, a little bigger tool. Yeah, X431V or X431 5. Uh, great little tool. So, so that's the difference there. I guess if I had to buy one, I would buy the 431 the bigger one, because I think they're about the same price. That's my thoughts on that. However, whoa, man down. Uh, oh, I really got to pee. Uh, let's see. What was I going to tell you, folks? Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. What I'd like to do, perhaps, is a, is a uh, I don't I don't do scan tool reviews because I think they're silly because you can't possibly show every single thingamajig on any given scan tool. The only thing you could do is compare, you know, features, let's say on one make mods, take the rapid ranger behind us, you know, we can plug into that, we could go into, you know, how many models can we talk to? How many bi-directional controls do you have? How fast does it boot up? You know, can you poke around quick? Can you do this? Can you do that? But then you, you know, you pop it on a, uh, you know, you pop it on a keyer and uh, you know, now things are different where one tool might be better than the other. So uh, I would say if you want a tool and you want support in the U.S., then buy an Altel from the U.S., you know, the, you know, 808, 908 MS, not the MK because they're the China ones, or buy a Bosch tool or an OTC or a Snap-on. You know, buy something that has U.S. support, uh, which both Altel and Launch do. However, the, you know, the Chinese versions of their tools are dominating the market because they're cheap. But if you have a problem, forget about it. You know, unless you like emailing. So. Uh, diagnose of a new neutral drop car. <laughs> you don't want to diagnose their cars when Stuntman's done with them. I'll tell you that. Uh, if you professionally use a tool, buy one with support. You know, and that's that's the thing, TDM. Like I have, you know, the, those are both China tools. Both my hotels are China tools. And. You know, I had a problem with one, you know, boom, do some emails and, you know, you know, it's kind of a pain in the hoo-hoo. But a couple of days later, you know, one shows up. You got to send the other one into some weird guy in California. It's, it's, it's a weird, shady system they have. But it is nice to have a tool. Like, you know, if I have a problem with my ADS 625 or 325 Bosch, phone call. You're talking to a human. You know, you got things happening. You know, you can talk to somebody. It's great. You know, and that, that means a lot, you know, when you're in the shop like these, you know, other tools, you know, they're secondary tools. So it's not, you know, it's not a huge deal. So what's my weight class as far as what? <laughs> like how much do I weigh? <laughs> Too much. Uh, 
Um, what we got here? The Maco Maximus, I think that's, I don't know if that's a launch tool. Like, you know, Maco and, um, you know, Maco, I don't think they make any of their tools. They're just like, you know, they just buy tools, put their names on type thing. Like, uh, you know, a lot of tool companies do. But um, like Maco and Mac, their scan tools are usually launch or Bosch or somebody like that. You know, they don't make any of their scan tools. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a launch. Uh, Kevin there, Kevin. Oh, he says it's a launch, but three times the price. So yeah, I wouldn't buy one just, you know, under somebody else's label, you know, if you can get it, you know, somewhere else. Oh, and that's what we're talking about. Uh, it's saying that I don't do scan tour videos. However, uh, Miss Marie uh, gave her the Altel AP 200. Now, this is a Bluetooth dongle. Goes in her little Hondu. Now let me tell you what, for a $69 tool, so I gave it to her, so here, you can have this. And uh, she, you know, she puts it in and you know, it gets the Hondu stuff on there. That is a fantastic little tool on your cell phone. Every make or every module on her car, boom, scan them all. No bi-directional controls, but you can read data and read codes from every single module in OEM and OBD2 side of things. And if you want to add another product line to it, let's say you had a, you owned at home, you owned a Hondu and a Chevrolet, I think it's 20 bucks. You can add Chevrolet or whatever. And you have like a fully functioning, essentially like the MS-808 uh, scan tool right on your cell phone. So... It's a, a great little tool. I thought about buying another one and hooking it up to my cell phone or a tablet or something just to show you guys because I think that would be a good tool. So don't go and buy one because I'll put up a product link when I do. That way I can get back a little. <laughs> so, yeah, the Maxisys 800 series. Yeah. I don't know much about it, DIY Dave, but I was more than impressed to see that, uh, you know, she's on, she's got to hook her car, you know, going through some stuff. And there was a little I button next to it, you know, information. It was next to the data pit. And I was like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, what's that? I'm like, ah, you know, if it's like the Maxisys, you know, when you click on it, if you have a acronym for the, the data pit, all it would do is give the full, you know, the full thing. You know, like if it was, you know, ECT, you hit the I button, it says, you know, engine coolant temp. This went way beyond that. It would say, you know, engine coolant temp. And then it would give a description of, you know, how it worked in pretty good detail, uh, more than just the generic, like, you know, when your car warms up, it, you know, it does this, you know, talked about, I think it had like, you know, positive coefficient, negative coefficient, you know, normal values. Uh, it was pretty, pretty solid. So I was pretty, pretty impressed with what it could do uh, for the price of it, you know, because a lot of people are looking for, you know, that sub hundred dollar bill uh, scan tool. And I, from what I've seen of Bluetooth dongles and scan tools in general, uh, that would be the best bang for the buck if you're a home gamer. And you're only working on, you know, one maker model. Uh, but if you got a side hustle going on and you do some stuff and your buddy comes over and let's say you don't have, you know, he drives a Ford. Let's say he drives a Ford. You know, this guy's really not, you know, you're not like great friend. He drives a Ford, comes over and says, hey, my engine light's on. Can you check out my Ford? And you check it out and you see that you need to look at some factory data. You, you, you hold your hand out like this, say, you have him pay the twenty dollar bill. Boom! You get the you get the OE Ford stuff, and uh, you know, bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Now you're working on his car. Um, gotcha. I have to get my holler back, yo. So that's uh, you know that's what I would do. You know, if you want it, and then you know, boom. Now you got Ford. Now you got Hondu. Now you got you know whatever. So if you, your buddy wants to work on his car, it's gonna cost him twenty bucks or more. You know, whatever. So think about that. Um, so anyways, I mean, you guys think I should buy one and do I hate doing it. I hate doing scan tool stuff. Um, hey, good night, Steve. It's 040 over there. So that means it's 40 after midnight. 
Oh, ex the extra is only fifteen dollars. Okay, I didn't know that DIY, Dave. I thought I thought they were twenty. Uh, but either case, I mean that's you know still charging twenty. You make five bucks, you can go get a pack of smokes or something. Uh, psh, 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 psh. What? Uh, yeah. So I mean, do you guys think I should do? You know, you want me to buy it? I'll grab it. I'll buy one off at the Amazon, and I just have to give it to somebody when I'm done with it because I, you know, I personally probably won't use it. But uh, oh, twenty dollars for Apple. <laughs> yeah, I'm Apple people. So yeah, me, I'll, I'll get one. I'll show you guys what to, uh, you know, we'll get it and see what to do there, and we'll check it out. Getting the old text messages here. Okay. But uh, yeah, so all right, I should probably write that down because. I'm low on the content, just been too hectic to, to do anything. So that, that sounds like a good one. We can look at it. Uh, in my opinion, any other Bluetooth device is, is essentially a waste of money because let's say they're like, you know, 30 bucks. None of them, they don't do OEM, OEM level. They're just generic OBD2 code readers. Uh, and yes, you'll get generic OBD2 data, which is extremely helpful. But if I could spend an extra 30 bucks and get one, you know, let's say it's $70 and I could have OEM data and all modules on my car, that's the route I'm going. That's money, you know, well spent. Plus, you know, you have the generic side of it too if you want to work on, you know, your buddy's car or whatever. So that's that. Uh, no, nah, I didn't pee my pants yet. Um, this is like deer hunting training, you know, when you're in the tree stand for like five hours and you really got to pee because you didn't dehydrate yourself the day before. You just got to learn. Focus is still, don't fidget. Um, uh, does it do live data? Yeah, it does chip off the old block. That's why I just mentioned it does live data and codes and some reset functions on all modules on that given car model that you have. So. <laughs> Uh, what do we got here? Any advantage of buying the Napper, not a sponsor, ultra premium brake orders? I buy them on because they're machined differently than the cheaper ones. Uh, they look like they're machine cut on a lathe and they're also coated. So in the Northeast, big difference. <laughs> drip, drip, drip. You, you can't get me. <laughs> No scan tool reviews. <laughs> Don't worry, it would be uh, a one-off, you know, scan tool review. So I'm trying to use more scan tools that are uh, laptop based because they're easier for doing videos because I'm able to use a screen recorder. It kind of stinks. I love I love using my Bosch and that's Android based. However, Bosch doesn't allow you to add any APKs to it even through the back door. Of course, it's you know beyond my abilities to do that. I would love to have a screen recorder on it. Uh, I am gonna put them on the Altel so I can hopefully screen record up on that joint and get that up on the videos. So uh, what's the super chat? Oh, it's uh, I turned it off. It's when people can uh, add money to ask questions that I can't answer. <laughs> Go home and talk to my wife and kids instead of you a-holes. Well, if you were here and listening, you know that my wife is in the office along with my children. So I will stay here and talk to the a-holes. Really inappropriate. And he just got banned. Boom. Kobe took care of it. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know of any DIY like based. Uh, laptop based scan tools. So I would like, I've got, um, uh, what is it? Bosch master tech. I think it is used with a VCI module, kind of a generic scan tool. It has some OEM stuff on it. You know, I use that, but it's kind of primitive. Uh, I've got the GDS GM and the Toyota tech stream. And that's pretty much it on laptop, but we do work on a lot of GM. So that's why I get to use that little guy, but that's mostly for, 13 and newer. Uh, what else we got here? How do you get a blue wrench? You send a uh, uh, envelope with a thousand dollars in it and um, you get a blue wrench. Just kidding. 
Uh, I only give blue wrenches to the folks I know personally and trust because they, uh, you know, they moderate the channel and they delete the naughty comments. Oh, and then they ban you from the channel permanently, which is fine. <laughs> or you can send a thousand bucks, but I can't guarantee you get a blue wrench. Have I checked out the new Ion tools from the Harbor Freight? I haven't because we don't have, I think the closest Harbor Freight is like an hour away. I think we have to go north up towards Rochester or we head to the east. Uh, is it Horseheads? I think they have one down by the mall now. So, oh, sorry, Andrew. Yes, it is $10,000. Uh, I will give you two blue wrenches for that price or one for a thousand. <laughs> What's the best way to clean fuel injectors? The best way to clean a fuel injector is, uh, you know, depressurize the fuel system, let the engine stall, remove whatever you have to remove, remove the injector rail, unhook the fuel injector from it then I would walk straight over in that direction to the blue uh, trash can. I would drop it in the trash can, open the new box, put the injector in, boom, cleaned. So that would be the best, the best way to clean a fuel injector, in my opinion. Uh, yep, so that's how we do it. <laughs> That's the best way to clean them. So, uh, why permanently ban? Because you know they'll call me a mother effer. They'll say something stupid. So, uh, the moderators they take care of it over there. And uh, some people, you know, just kind of can't control your lips. Just you got to be when you come here. You got to act like a big boy. You just got to be be a grown up and just be a grown up. That's all you have to do. Just be a grown up. <laughs> But uh, anyways, what, um, what else we got going on? Yeah, <laughs> talk like a normal person. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Do I have a butt out tool? I don't have a butt out tool. I've looked at them, Jay Cooper, but um, you guys would have to Google that. I don't know what images are come up with. You're going to want to pick on the image that's blaze orange. It's a... A deer device. Uh, I've never had. I've never really had an issue on that side of the department of the deer as far as field dressing them. So uh, I haven't bought one, but I do know a lot of people that have them and say they're you know fantastic to use. So um, what else we got? How's my Jeep doing? It's doing all right. Just sitting at home, sitting in the prickers, collecting moisture. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, I should make a hunt video. I couldn't make a hunt video on this channel because, uh, it, you know, it's controversial. People have feelings and uh, they get kind of upset about that stuff. And if you say something wrong or like, oh, he's got a gun, you know, all of a sudden, you know, evil person. <laughs> so it's too, uh, it's too debatable, you know. In today's day and age where you get to choose your gender uh, based on your feelings and how you identify yourself and all that stuff, you can't just go. You can't go just go blasting that around, you know. It's a different different day and age uh, that we live in, folks. I'll tell you that. Uh, it's weird. Uh, I don't agree with it. But there's just a lot of weirdos out there. <laughs> yeah, you can, Chris. You get to, you get to choose nowadays. And, uh, yeah, it, it is. A sad, it's a sad state we're living in, you know. I know there's some messed up people, but, uh, yeah, everybody does get a little butt hurt and, uh, literally in some senses, but anyways, in my world, boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. It's that simple, but it's different. Anyways, let's change the subject before we say something naughty. <laughs> We don't, we don't talk politics. We talk tools. Oh, you said it. What did I say, Corey? Hey, all I'm saying, that was from Kindergarten Cop, okay? The little kid on there, cutest little show ever. Uh, what do we got here? 
Oh, P word. You can say the P word, Corey. It's okay. You can't say like, you know, the C word or the D word or I think all the other uh, names for the hoo hoo. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, gosh. Oh, man. I'm going to undo my belt here soon. <laughs> yeah. Still getting used to the new hat. Uh, the S word. I don't know the S word, Dave. There's a lot. There's a lot of naughty words that we can't say on YouTube because they get really upset about that stuff. So we try to keep, try to keep it on the DL. You know what I mean? Oh, the other C word for the P. Oh yes. Uh, am I going to any training coming up soon? Uh, not that I can think of Keith other than uh, TST. I like to go down to that every year. Uh, so that's, that's always a fun, you know, good time. Get to meet all our friends down there. Uh, usually I have a few too many toddies and try to stay awake during training, but, <laughs> uh, nothing planned. So the CTI classes that are around here, Keith are usually postponed in the winter months. We have them in the summertime and they do five or six a year that I go to. Uh, so I think we already, the last one was a Hyundai Kia class or maybe it's just Kia. No, it was a Hyundai Kia class. And it was, it was okay. Um, I've been to almost all of the CTI classes, so there's, I'm starting to get some repeats, uh, which there's out of all the, you know, parts store classes, we'll call it, you know, the CarQuest Technical Institute CTI, out of all the, like the Napa classes, they suck. I mean, they're stupid. They're beyond terrible. They're a waste of money. Don't ever go to a Napa training class, ever. Uh, at least any of the ones I've ever been to. It's just more of a hobnob thing. You go and, you know, you pay your money, which is severely overpriced. You know, it's over $100 for a class. And most of them are just trainers that are not even in the automotive industry that are just reading little bits of jiggly bits off a page that pertain to nothing that's going to help you further yourself in the trade. On the other hand, CTI classes are good. Uh, the guys that give the classes are good. You know, they're, you know, they're shop guys, they work in the shop, they've been in the pits, they know what's happening and their theories and everything. They're, it's just solid. They got just got good stuff. So I'll say that. Um, oh yeah, John Gillespie. So Albert uh, Anderson. So he's the guy who teaches around our area, John Gillespie. Uh, nice fella. Um, you know, he gets out, you know, he's in a shop, he runs shop, he does stuff, you know, well, he, I don't say he runs a shop. He, he works on cars still, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, have I ever worked on any Lamborghinis? Well, oddly enough, we had a Lambo in here the other day at 2000. I don't know what year it is, 12, 13, 14 Lamborghini Super Liargo or something like that. Did I work on it? No. Uh, did I put an inspection sticker on it? You bet. But uh, didn't work on it. Lambo. It was pretty neat. V10. Something or other. I don't know. Oh, I had 11,000 miles on it. Uh, can you say that a customer blew a trainee on YouTube? You can. You can say that as long as you're talking about transmission. Uh, do I feel performance loss when I put the swivels on my air tools? Uh, I don't know. The only air tool I have without a swivel on it is this one. And I use that for blowing up tires. So this still performs well for blowing up tires. But all of my other air tools, I don't think I, oh yeah, blow nozzle. That's, that's, the, that's the only other tool I have without, you know, without a swivel. Uh, everything else has swivels. Bah, bah, look at this monster, big nasty, still alive. Uh, still kicking some taking names. Uh, she's one mean son of a bee right here. I love this thing. Biggest, meanest air hammer they ever made. 498 shanked. <laughs> kind of like its owner. Got a swivel on it. Uh, run 160 pounds of air pressure at all times. So, and I only use three eight toes. If I need a little more pizzazz out of something, you let the compressor kick on, you let her bust out at 180. You dump a bunch of air tool oil in it, and then you have a brief 30 seconds of what I call turbo power. And that's where stuff breaks or it doesn't come apart. 
So that's it. Yep, 2,000 short of a full inch. I know that story, Hard Knocks. Have I ever considered just doing diagnostics? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, be honest with you, I, I haven't considered just doing that. I like to be what they call well-rounded. <laughs> I don't know if I need to hold up quotes every time I say something, but uh, I enjoy doing it all. So, uh, do I have a so cleaning injectors is BS. Uh, essentially, it's BS. Typically, if there is an obstruction in a fuel injector, then, you know, you need to replace the injector. You can try cleaning, you know, all the, all the garbage you dump in the tank. I mean, that's a, you know, it's a, you know, fan, I, you know, I wish I owned the company who sold the stuff. But uh, yeah, essentially, long story short, if you have an injector that has a, a flow issue, let's say you're doing injector balance tests and you got, you know, Seven of the eight injectors are flowing, you know, they're dropping 20 PSI in the given time that they drop, but you have one that's only dropping, you know, four PSI. I'm not going to tear the car apart and attempt to, you know, clean this somehow, you know, either with, you know, ultrasonic cleaner or something like that. When I can just, you know, you just replace it. You just replace that injector, you put it in, boom, job's warranted, you move on. So I don't have a lot of experience cleaning them. There's a lot of, you know, gimmicky machines and stuff you see, you know, perhaps they work fantastic, but how do you sell that service to a customer? You know, say for example, you take your car uh, into the, you know, car play, wherever you, wherever you go to get your car repaired and you pull it in there and, you know, the mechanic comes in, he's like, oh, Mr. You know, Joe Blow, I did your oil change. Uh, I recommend our injector cleaning uh, service for, you know, $199.99. And you have, you know, no symptoms, you know, your car is running fine, your fuel trims are spot on, but, you know, you get some kind of pamphlet and a spiel saying that, uh, you know, clogged injectors over time can, you know, cause this and poor running and blah, blah, blah. And they hook their mystical machine to your car and, you know, you leave, you're $200 poor, your car runs the same, your fuel trims are still spot on. And, uh, you know, there's only one winner. That's just my thoughts on that. I work on a lot of high mileage cars and I'm just I've in my I've only been doing it 20 years, but in my experience, I can't say I've ever ran across a need for it where it's like, wow, this car runs a little bit rough. It could really benefit from an injector cleaning. It's never been my experience. <sighs> but that's that's you know purely my opinion. So I think Scotty Kilmer would probably be a better person to ask that question to. He could probably answer it more thoroughly. And he has 51 years experience. So I'm not saying stop using all your chemicals and goos you put in the tank, but I'd rather take that 199 or whatever an injector, you know, cleaning service costs. And I would just rather save that money. So if I ever did have an injector fail, then, you know, there you go. Boom, you paid for it. How many employees do I have? Two, three, three. Uh, Jason, Josh, and Marie. Uh, Good night, TDM, you Land Rover lover. Dream about Jeeps, will you? What else we got here? What aftermarket injectors do I like? Honestly, folks, I don't do a ton of injector failures. I mean, that is, I believe that injectors are replaced like coil packs where, you know, somebody gets a misfire, first thing you do, you throw a uh, coil pack at it. Second thing you do, you throw an injector at it. Third thing you do is take it to a shop, find out what's really wrong with it. You know, that's usually the pecking order. But as far as confirmed 100% failed fuel injectors, I don't see it a ton. And usually if I do, they're electronically broken. They're either shorted or open. So, you know, uh, you know, in the case where you get some Toyotas that come in that, you know, are a pound or two variance on injector balance and you're setting lean codes, in that case, we'll get them. Uh, you know, the old GM poppet styles used to do tons of those, uh, but they failed physically. They mechanically broke. So, so I, it's not like I'm popping injectors in every single day. I did some in a Nissan 
uh, not too long ago. Again, failed an injector balance test and you know all kinds of lean codes, misfire codes. Boom, new injectors, ship it. What's my shop rate? I'm at 80 beans per hour. Vinny's probably home sleeping. Uh, let's see. Break lines. So I do them all or only what's failed? Uh, yes. <laughs> Depends if it's a Chevrolet truck uh, or certain vehicles. Uh, we, we, you know, this is a Chevy country up here. Uh, you just get the whole shebang. You buy the kit. I get stainless steel front to back, every single line in and out. Because uh, you do one. And the next week you do another one. And then you do another one. And then you do another one. You know, why pay the guy to bring the truck in and pull the wheels off and replace the line and blade the brakes. And then a month later, you do it again and again and again and again. When you can just bring it in, you put the whole kit on pre-bent. They fit absolutely fantastic. Dorman as a company, this Dorman right here, in my opinion, most of their parts, 95% of them suck. Absolute garbage. Now, these are just fine because, well, they're just fender washers. How can you screw up a fender washer? All right. Fender washer. However, they make a stainless steel brake line kit. Uh, it's clearly obvious that they don't make them themselves because they fit beautifully. So I do vouch for those. The rest of their stuff don't buy it, though, <laughs> in my opinion. And we're allowed to have those here. Uh, am I addicted to coffee? No, I'm not. You know, Billy Rig Repairs. I only I only have a couple cups a day. Of course, winter time's coming, and I tend to drink a little bit more in the winter time. Yeah, they could screw up a nail. I tell you that, man. Terrible company. Gosh, it's too bad too. I'm just glad they don't make cars. Uh, Napper steering racks are they garbage? Uh, some of them that I used have been. Um, just the remanufacturing process in general. I think the Napper ones are BBB Industries is who makes the Napper ones. Last I knew, I don't know if they've switched back Cardone. It's hit or miss with remanufactured stuff, period. I'll tell you what is getting old is the freaking GM strike. A little ordeal they're on it. It's really starting to rain on my parade when we got to get OEM parts because... I wish they just pay these people or they hire new people or the whole union thing will blow up or whatever the hell the deal is. I don't watch the news, but all I know is we've surpassed the stupid level with it. Everybody wants a million dollars. Like, oh, I got to go to work. Oh, I need a million dollars. Uh, dude, you work in a factory. Just go to work, do your job, shut your mouth, go home. I don't, I don't know. It's just certain. Yeah, I wish they, they should just let GM go out of business back when they went out of business. It's been a lot easier because this is getting stupid. But, of course, I guess they would still have to build the parts. I don't know. I don't know much about that kind of stuff, so I shouldn't even comment on it. But all I know is on my end, it's starting to affect now because I'm trying to get parts. I just think some people aren't grateful. If you get up and you have a job and you get decent pay and you have you know, retirement and everything else and you work, for big, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I've never, I've never had to work in a job like that, but you probably make a hell of a lot more than I do here. So I don't know. I would just be happy to wake up and go to work. It's like, well, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to support my family. I'm going to come home to my wife and, you know, that's it. You know, having fun. You're just the life you've chose to live and you're working at your skill set and, you know, you're doing the best you can. You go in and give an honest day's work, get an honest day's pay, go home. Oh, that's a good point there, uh, 340 duster, Mopar guy. Uh, their manifolds. Manifold, their dormant manifolds aren't bad. They are a fraction of the cost of the OEM ones. However, there's always a but when you use the word dormant. But uh, I did get burned on one once. This was on a Ford 5.4. Bring it in, get out the old smoke wrench, while it studs off it, get the manifold off, get all the broken jiggly bits out, grab the new dormant manifold out of the box, wipe the schmoo off it from the Chinese cardboard, Put the gasket on, bolt the manifold on, tighten her up, fire it up. Bum, 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 bum. Dead mess. 
I'm like, that's weird. This thing ran great when I pulled it in, despite the fact that it was loud. Long story short, check it out. Throw a coil pack at it. Throw an injector at it. No, I didn't. It had spark. It had injector pulse, and it also had 150 pounds of back pressure. Why? Because when they cast the manifold, they never cleaned out the port. Ended up pulling the manifold back off because I had a single cylinder exhaust restriction. And so that either told me that the rocker had fallen off the, you know, the cam faller fell off the old Ford or the brand new manifold I put on was restricted. And sure as shoot, it was. I pulled it off, shined a little flashlight. This the light of mine. It didn't shine. But I looked in there and it was plugged up tighter than a Banshee or tighter than anything else that can be tight. So I grumbled, growled. And the moral of this story is if you're working on them and you get a manifold and it's a doorman, look inside of it, make sure all the ports, give it one of these down the hole because you want to make sure that that hole is open. Ah, good point. Larry Park Sr., the doorman, aluminum elbows are nice and he's talking about the general motors 3.8 liter belt tensioner bypass hose whatever the stupidest design gm ever could have come up with is their air let's uh crap we forgot the coolant hoses let's run it through this belt tensioner with this plastic elbow really uh so Dorman does make some metal elbows for them however there is a but if you buy them take the chinesium o-rings that they put on there and what you need to do to make them last is open the package, you get the elbows out, uh, throw the package away, and then take uh, your knife and take the O-ring and just cut it. And then stretch it right back and pew, shoot it at the guy next to you because those O-rings are absolute garbage. Uh, put some good O-rings on it, pop the metal elbows in, Bob's your uncle. Uh, sorry, Schmitty. I hope you change the O-rings because if not, it will haunt you in about six months when it comes back leaking. Um, but anyhow, that's enough about Dorman. How's the fluid film working on the Tundra? Awesome. And I know, uh, I'm buying my fluid film in the 55 gallon drums. So <laughs> yeah, I do tribo max. I really got to pee really bad. Um, yeah, if coolant touches it and GM made it, it's going to be broke bottom line. Um, do I love working for myself? Most days, some days I don't, most days I do <laughs> live stream on stream. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? You know what? You know, what's starting to bug me is my eyeballs are changing and I just, I catch myself doing this all the time. I'm looking at something and I do this. And my eye doctor, when I went in for my exam, we'll call it, because I've noticed that my vision is changing as I age, and I'm old now, 40. And uh, I I've always had perfect vision. And I've noticed that when I'm under dashboards, and I'm, you know, let's say I got to get under there and get a number off a, you know, module, or, you know, looking at a fuse box, everything's a schmidge on the fuzzy side. And I can't get my head back far enough on the carpet to see it well. So I knew something is changing and it's going to change over time and the eye doctor nice fella anyways he uh, explained to me what's going on and he gave a little look in my peepers and told me that in three years i'll be back to see him and he pretty much could write the prescription now and i can just stick it in my pocket so pretty smart fella but yeah i'm gonna have to uh have the old reading glasses at some point i'm imagining I'm still pretty good. I can see pretty close, but it takes me a minute to focus and it's easier just to pull my head back. So, uh, yeah, wait till you're 60. I'll be like this. Be blind. Or just really angry. I don't know. I'm going to be a happy old man. I just want to get old so I can get a Cadillac because all the old people around here drive Cadillacs and I just, that's all I want. I assume, I assume when you turn 60, somebody mails you one. Um, Um, yeah, that's what I do. I use my smartphone now. I stick, you know, stick the old phone under the dash and bloop, take a picture and then enhance, enhance. 
that's what I do there. Free tip for you. Of course, all you guys know that you're all techie. Uh, did I work at a shop before I owned one? I did. I worked for my pa. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what else we have here? I'm going to have to go soon because I'm going to go pee pee on the potty. I might have a swig of coffee left just a little. Don't be always nice and thirsty. Since I don't believe in it, cleaning injectors, what's my opinion on seafoam? My opinion on seafoam is seafoam works as it states it does. Seafoam is an excellent carbon cutter. Uh, not as good as like gum cutter two plus two, you know, it's not like burn your skin and your eyeballs, uh, but it does, it does work well. Let's say you have uh, carbon issues, sticking valves, uh, you know, you have perfectly functioning fuel injectors, but uh, so let's say for example, that you could prove definitively that, you know, this valve is not sealing on every single, every single stroke uh, or every single uh, cycle, we'll call it. And you can prove it. You know, for example, like I had a uh, Chevrolet 1999 Chevrolet Tahoe that under load, going up a hill, under load with a snowmobile trailer on it. You get top of the hill, boom, dead misfire number seven cylinder every single time. As soon as you pull over, by the time you get out and pop the hood, she's running smooth again. I knew at that point we had good injector flow. I could prove that. I knew we didn't lose spark. Um, you know, I knew we had everything there except for compression when that was happening. How do I know that? Because I kept an amp clamp on it. I went out, stuffed the thing right to the rug. Got that thing just misfiring, glowing red hot, just like they do on neutral drop. We got a glower. I pulled over, put it in the close or in the uh, clear flood mode. Crank. Had a trigger on number seven. Boom! Number seven cylinder is losing compression under load when it gets hot. The only thing it could be at that point was valve clearance. Something is holding the valve open. Intake valve, exhaust valve. I don't care. I didn't care. I knew what it. I knew that that's what it was. You know, there's a tolerance issue and a guide. Uh, you know, something's going on there. So what I did. You know, I told the guy, I was like, well, you want to fix it? You want to fix it right? You know, we're going to pull it ahead. Well, this is a freaking junk 99 Chevy Tahoe. And this was like, gosh, this was a long time ago. This was like maybe in 05, 06 when I did this. Uh, you know, I was like, you know, it's just not worth fixing. So long story short, I was like, you know, we can try some, you know, some seafoam. You know, blah, 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 down the intake, let it do the white smoke show. Ran a couple cans of that through it. Just, you know, straight down, straight down its throat. Nothing in the gas tank, nothing in the oil. Blah, 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 right down the stroke. Thing never missed the beat again. Drove it to its death. So that's my thoughts on sea foam. I've seen it work in other instances. I like using it for cleaning throttle bodies because it works well uh, as a good top end cleaner. Uh, back in the day, you guys remember the uh, the Chrysler five nines and the five twos that had the big problem with the valley pan. So a uh, real stupid design. You know, turtle shaped intake manifold had a bolt on bottom on the intake uh the gasket would get hard big thick gasket like eighth inch thick get hard boop, suck it right down the intake and then now you've got like 18 inches of crankcase vacuum these things start guzzling oil uh right out of the right out of the valley i mean these things will burn two quarts a day 318s 360s they all did this this is like the you know late 90s early 2000s pre like 03. well the thing is you know you bring it in you pop the intake off put a gasket on it send mama down the road with it. This thing is pinging like a mother lover. I mean, you use that spark knocking like you never heard it go up. Oh, sound like you're dumping a bag of marbles on the hood. Now Chrysler, I think that is service bolts. And I wanted you to use the Chrysler top end engine cleaner and this and that, which might've worked good. On those, I use sea foam. So you pop the hood, unhook the brake booster hose, shove it in the can, let it sit there and choke and puke and stall. Don't hydro lock it. And then uh, you sit and you wait and you fire it up and, you know, the rest of the can down its throat, boom, no more pinging. And that's, you know, as a result of, you know, we had, we had a known carbon issue. This thing is eating oil like a banshee. You know, they've put cases of oil through this thing. Catalytic converters are nuked. Who cares? You run some sea foam through it, boom, fix your uh, pinging problem, throw a couple cats on it and adios muchacho or muchacha. 
or muchachos. Am I saying that right, Cuba? I don't know. So that's my thoughts on the seafoam when used appropriately in an effort to fix a problem that, you know, you kind of know, you know what the problem is, but so, and as far as, uh, you know, cleaning the valves on your GDI, you don't need seafoam or anything like that. What you need is you go down to the department store that rents tools and you rent yourself a freaking jackhammer because that stuff is hard as rock. You can dump seafoam on that. You can dump, you can dump 55 gallon drum of seafoam on carbon up valves from a GDI engine. You are not going to cut it. Oh, see, si, senor. I did it. Adios, muchachos or muchachas. I'm good. I'm starting to learn. Um, but yeah, as far as trying to clean carbon on a GDI engine with seafoam, forget about it. You know, forget about it. You're wasting time. You're wasting your money. If it, uh, if your GDI, if it's plugged up, you know, you got cold start misfires or, you know, you pull the intake and you see this thing's a mess, walnut blast it. That's all you can do. Uh, or use, uh, you know, some like plastic or wooden scraping devices, but that, that crap is hard. And, you know, you can make your own homemade walnut blaster, you know, a piece of radiator hose, you know, so you can hook your shot back to it on a radiator hose, take your knife, cut a notch in it, buy one of those $50 speed blasters, you know, you load the walnut in it, just stick that radiator hose right up to the port and just go to town. Uh, obviously, make sure the valve's closed. So you don't have to buy all the special adapters and stuff. Just pull the intake, radiator hose, you know, two inch, whatever, whatever fits your vacuum. Give it the old suck job, cut a hole in it, get your sandblast nozzle in there, go bananas. Um, what shop management software do I use? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty small potatoes, Albert. I don't use a shop management software. We use Napa Tracks for our invoicing, if that's what you're talking about. So we use Napa Tracks. And if you are somewhere in the great United States of America and you have that ability and you have Napa in your neighborhood and you use that, you do get a discount on your Mitchell Pro Demand. So let's say if you're if you already subscribed to Mitchell Pro Demand, let's say it costs you a buck eighty-five a month. The Napa Tracks costs like one ninety-five, but it includes Mitchell. So you know, do the math. And you get a discount on like a Denefix. So I think instead of paying a hundred and whatever that is, I think you get it for a buck and a quarter, 135. And I don't know if they give any discount on uh, all data. So something to look into. Yeah, Nap are not a sponsor, Keith. They're not a sponsor. And I don't want them to be because we got to be able to, uh, you know, say what you want. You don't want people sponsored because if you don't like this stuff, you got to be able to tell them. You know, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't have a walnut blasting uh, jack. I haven't done a video on one yet. It's, it's a messy freaking job, I'll tell you that. How harmful is it on an engine? It's not harm. It's not harmful at all. If you're talking about walnut blasting, it's not. It's not harmful at all because your valves are closed and you just clean up your mess when you're done. Oh uh, yeah, it, it's pouring out. It's been raining all day, JC. So yeah, definitely no, uh, no bohan. Uh, does Mrs. O make lunch for Josh or Jason? No, she doesn't. They bring their own lunch. Well, you know, uh, my boy Josh, you know, he brings he brings lunch every day and uh, usually leftovers, whatever he had for dinner. And he likes to go out and sit in his truck. So he goes out and sits in his truck and eats usually. I think he takes a nap, too, because I give him an hour for lunch. So I think he goes out, eats lunch, uh, takes a nap, you know, watches some video or something. Or, I don't know. Maybe maybe does whatever he does. I don't know what he does. He's been doing the same thing for years, and he likes to poop about 1 o'clock. That's all I know. And then Jason, he is not a very healthy eater. Hell of a nice guy. Super glad he's here. Eats junk food all day. And uh, 
it's kind of funny because he's always got a plentiful supply of junk food here. Uh, Sour Patch Kids uh, keeps my freezer full of ice cream, like drumsticks and uh, stuff like that, and uh, eats a lot of great garbage food that I, I would be eating if I were not married and Mrs. O made my lunch. And that reminds me. So this year I'm at, uh, I'm at the hunter safety course with, with my oldest boy. And I think it was his, I don't know if it was his gun hunter safety course, or bow hunter safety course, one of them. Where the hunter safety course, of course, there's a bunch of CEOs there. Yes, ECOs, environmental conservation officers there. And I'm just kind of BSing with the one because the one place that we went, we had to drive like an hour. So I'm just hanging out there and it's like an all day thing. So I'm talking with this guy and, uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, deer hunting and like, you know, manly man stuff. And, you know, he processes his own uh, meat also. So I was just asking him, you know, what's the deal? What, you know, what do you do? The big question is, you know, you get venison hamburger and venison is very lean meat and you don't use any of the fat from the deer. So because that's, you know, where you get some nasty taste. So you just use very lean meat. And I asked him, like, oh, what do you, you know, what do you use? You know, I like I always get pork butt, you know, we'll grind it, run it through the grinder, mix that in there to give it some fat content. Of course, you have to make sure you label your stuff because you got to cook it thoroughly. You know, you want it, you can't have like your medium rare, you know, just this side of salmonella type, you know, burger. Um, anywho, fantastic idea. The guy's like, bacon. He's like, I use bacon. I'm like, get out of here, you know, forget about it. Bacon. So this year, boom, you know, we, we get a dough. I got about 10 pounds of hamburger from the trimmings and, you know, stuff like that that we didn't use in the steaks and roasts and everything. So I got 10 pounds of, you know, let's say 10 pounds of ground burger. Well, I get like five pounds. No, how many pounds? Yeah, we use five. It's a package of bacon is a pound. So, I, you know, did about half, five pounds of bacon, run it through the meat grinder, mix it all up, run it all back through. <sighs> I tell you what, man, I, if I hit a deer with a truck, that whole baby's getting ground into bacon burgers. If you haven't done it, do it. Because what's better than bacon? Nothing. More bacon. That's the only thing that's better. I have never added bacon as the substitute fat in my venison. I have no idea. But now I'm glad I did. It is like heaven. It's like heaven. It's like if baby Jesus came down and handed you a hamburger, that's what it would taste like. It would taste like bacon mixed with venison. It's amazing. So think about it. Uh, buy some bacon. We got it from the store when it's buy one, get one. And, uh, you know, it doesn't cost much. But, man... I tell you what, get it, do it. Even if you got to go to the store, even if you're not a hunter and you're just a meat eater, go buy some hamburger, buy some bacon, run it through your grinder, mix it up. You'd be like, why didn't I think of this like 25 years ago? I don't know. <sighs> so that's that. Oh, if you're vegan, what I would do if I was vegan, I would go get some tofu. And I'd run that through my grinder. And then I would go get a package of that bacon and run that through my grinder. Then I would take the tofu and I wouldn't mix it with the bacon. I would just throw it straight in the trash. Then I would take that bacon, sit that baby on the griddle and enjoy your life, pal. Trust me. Trust me. Ugh. Miss, I, th I think she has some in there right now. <laughs> uh, what's my favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, homemade coffee, boy. Uh, mine all time. If I'm just gonna go, to, if I'm gonna go, just get some. I uh, probably get strawberry with like the real strawberry chunks in it. I know it's kind of like, you know, yeah. I just like plain old strawberry. Vegan, old word for bad hunter. <laughs> That's an old word for bad hunter. Basically my food poops on the food you eat. Uh, of course I eat, you know, vegetables and stuff too, because my little makes me, but I don't care. You know, some people are vegan. Mrs. O, she doesn't eat meat, <laughs> but she's over like the bone. <laughs> That's a song lyric. All right. Uh, yeah, no, she's not, she's not a meat eater. She's a I don't know, whole food, something or other. Uh, basically if it tastes like crap or, or if, if it tastes good, it makes you feel good and has a lot of sugar and stuff in it. If you don't eat that. So I think it's, um, I, don't want, I don't know what they call themselves, a whole, whole food something or other. 
Uh, yeah, bacon is gluten free. Do I still recommend fluid film or crown? Absolutely. Either one of the products. Fantastic. Love it. Um, yeah, that's what she does. She lost a ton of weight. I mean, not that she's a chubby anyways or anything, but, you know, she's getting skinny, man. It's starting to get me worried. Like, she's getting a six-pack. I'm like, man, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like a, a fat fella. I'm like, dang, girl. <laughs> the Impossible Burger? Oh, I think that's, uh, who has that? Like, Burger King McDonald's or something. It's like a, it's like a vegan thing. Yeah, Paleo or Whole Food. I don't know what it's called, Kuba. It's something. It's something. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I don't care what people eat. I eat what I eat. You eat what you eat. Um, but uh, have I ever been to Kentucky? I don't believe so. So um, can I scan the new Chryslers that are locked? Absolutely. Straight up for me, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, or other. If I had to choose a domestic... Well, I'd be driving a red, white, and blue Chevrolet uh, simply because they're, I think, the easiest to work on out of all three of the domestic beaters. And, you know, that's why I would drive one because they're all going to break. I would drive the one that's easiest to fix, in my opinion. Yep. But uh, if I could drive anything, you know, I drive, I drive a Tundra, man. I love my Tundra. I love that thing. Chevy Thunder, that's right. Oh, I would never drive a Jeep than a Chevy, no way. What's your tool question, Billy Yoder? Most of the Amish folks around here are named Yoder. Are you Amish? Probably not. Not if you're on YouTube, dummy. Unless you got the generator running. I had to fix a generator for the Amish guy once. He had uh, duct tape over the electrical outlets on it. Oh, he's not Amish. I don't know. Oh, same question. What am I missing something here? I'm missing something here. Oh crap, they're picking up. I don't know what the tool question. I'm trying to wait for it. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Hold on there. What is the part number to your tool listing you use to slide under the harness tape when you were cutting the tape with a razor? I know what tool you're talking about. Maybe my most favorite tool in the world. Ow. Oh, oh, bladder buster. Hold on. He's talking about this little fella. Keeps you from cutting wiring harnesses, supposedly used in the aviation industry for the zip ties so funny story about this so let's say for example like take this here for example like let's pretend this is the wiring harness and your zip ties on there and you got a million dollars worth of wires under there and you're like you know should i cut it oh boom you just cut through all the wires what you do you take this little fella right here you give it the old slip under i'm gonna cut myself buddy i'm gonna cut myself deep you slip it under the harness you hold it up, you know, it's a lot easier doing a cart. Boom, like that. There you go. Zip ties off, everybody's good. It is a Menda, M-E-N-D-A. Focus. Just a minute. I'm going to try to get it for you, Mr. Yoder. There it is. M-E-N, like, um, what is that? Mike, Echo, November, Delta, Alpha, Menda. And then this is the number on it. Whether or not it's a number that you can use, is I got no clue. Hold on. Focus. I'm going to read it to you. Oh, Big Clive. Dot com's up in the joint. Two famous people in here. 35250. 35250. Menda. M-E-N-D-A. 3520. Do some Googling. You'll probably find a handy little tool. Oh, man. Starting to lean. Starting to lean over here, folks. Uh... You don't want to wait while I go take a PP on the potty. Well, how come that's not focusing? Uh, great tool. Uh, oh, yeah, and the funny story goes with it. So this year, my daughter, she's at camp, not band camp, but at camp. 
Uh, I don't remember which camp. Don't know. So she goes there. And when she went there, for some reason, in her pocket, she had a ring. Uh, one of Vanessa's ring, you know, it's like, a, you know, what do you call it? Like a sleep prop, you know, you take something from home. So, you, you know, if you get scared, you're like, oh, remember the ring. And it gives you mystical powers when you miss your parents and all that stuff. I think we've all been there. We do that. Uh, it's like completely psychological, but she had a ring with her and it fit. Uh, okay, just a minute. Big Clyde, Big Clyde tells me to go pee. I got to do what the man says. Uh, the ring uh, evidently fits her pinky finger. And well, she puts it on, you know, one of the other non pinky fingers. So one of these fingers and well, what do you know? What do you say? It gets stuck. So then we get a call from the camp nurse saying, Hey, you know, your daughter's here, your rings stuck on her finger. We tried the ring cutter, uh, this, that, and the other thing, uh, you know, what do you want to do? I was like, we'll just chop her finger off. You know, uh, it wasn't an option, uh, like an hour away. So, I told Mrs. O, like, boom, you know, I know what to do. I sent her with this thing and a pair of side cutters, Nipex, in case you're wondering. Mrs. O goes there. Of course, they tried ice in her hand. They tried soap in her hand. You know, the whole deal. Can't get it off. Mrs. O goes there, walks in, boom, slips it under, cut it. Sayonara. Have a nice day. Remember that? Sis, yeah. When Sissy got a ring stuck on her finger at camp this year? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, needless to say, this works for a... Uh, a ring cutting apparatus as well as uh, slipping under the zip ties in the aviation world where they can string wires through or in our case slipping it under cutting the zip tie or cutting the electrical tape on the wiring harness that's what i use it for great tool probably should buy another one because i have a tendency to lose things that are small like that you lose things that are small yeah. I, I gotta you you stay here i gotta go i gotta go i gotta go talk to the i gotta go potty all right, talk to the people. Uh, tell them about. Uh, what do you want to tell them about? Tell them about like. Remember when you're sitting in your tree stand and you see, you see a deer and you're like and you're like this. <laughs> tell them about that. Uh, we don't we don't say anything about uh, the president or religion or sex or uh, drugs or anything controversial. Okay. We don't talk about gutting deer. We don't talk about. We talk about eating meat. And being good stewards of the land, but uh, okay, yeah. these are their comments over here. Okay, you don't throw me under the bus. Uh, <laughs> okay, <here>. oh man, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, you want our sack of today? Uh, five three. Um, I don't like Chevy's. Um, uh, yeah, I don't like Chevys or Dodges. I'm a Ford guy. Uh, I like some Toyotas. Um, I like Tundras. I like the Hunt. Yeah, I like the Hunt. Hope to get that, uh, big buck on our land. Uh, we have a nice 11 point. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> um, I like Kokomos. Yeah, just reading your comments here, just answering these questions. Yeah, I'll drive a nice Jeep. Yeah, you gotta be like all, like, you'll be jacked up stuff. Yeah. Chevy's. No, not a Chevy guy. Toyota, I like the Tacomas. Yeah, those are my, those are my thing. Um, yeah, Fords. I don't play video games, just don't like them. Not one of those people. I like uh, hunting. Uh, I like I like a lot of outdoor stuff. I like to drive the Jeep when my dad lets me through our woods. I like football, favorite team, Green Bay Packers. Yeah, they rock. Um, I like to watch a lot of movies. Yeah. You talking to him? I'm talking to him. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't like Chevys, Dodges. Oh, that, that's you might better be talking about Trump or something. Me? Yeah, because no. you start talking about Chevys and Dodge and. No, I don't. Talk. Like, I'm playing it over. Nope. 
Uh, oh, he has a girlfriend. You got a girlfriend? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get out of here. <laughs> oh, you got to go Snapchat or something? No, I've been doing that. Oh, probably. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, they want to know if you still build forts in the woods. Yeah. But what, you stay out of the woods in when? September. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's when the restricted zone comes up. I'm still in the woods. You tell him about your big 11 point split brow tines? Yeah, I saw him was 11 point. <laughs> you did? You told him? Yeah. You already told him about it? Yeah. You just can't wait? Yeah, I just can't wait. Just can't wait. Hope we're still there when I'm 14. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably be there, probably be dragging his head on the ground. <laughs> yeah. How many horns do you ever eat? None. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, whatever. It's all bragging rights, right? Yeah. Yep, meat in the freezer. Yeah, you want you want to drive the Jeep? What what all did you tell these people? Uh about my hunt and stuff. Like what? I don't come over here. Told them that I want to see that eleven point there. You tell me that split brow times? No, I forgot about that. Ooh, most important part. It's big though. He's he's spindly. He's big. He's past his ear. Probably 20, 21 inch 24 spread. No, he didn't twenty four. It's twenty four. He's only about it would score inch and a half, two inches it, past his ear. It would score one fifty. <laughs> all right. You score one, you think 150 inch buck? No, I don't think so. I do. He's probably more like 140. Pops bucks are big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> big Clive says that you tell him that mommy and daddy fight a lot. You should watch Big Clive. Super smart fella. Great accent, too. Big Clive. Bigclive.com. Okay. Uh, what else? And they say that you love Fords. Yeah, I look forward to a Ford guy. Why? They're just awesome. It's like Fords. Hmm. I'll tell you. I don't like your Tundra. What, what do you like about You don't even know anything about cars. You I, just like the way they look? Yeah. Oh. You look better than your, your Tundra. Yeah. Probably drive better. You think the Fords look better than the Tundras? Yeah, the Raptors. Oh, the Ford Raptor. <laughs> wow. Are you jealous how they look? She's no, I'm not jealous how they look. <laughs> Oh, do you like watching Neutral Drop? You watch Neutral Drop? You don't really watch it. I watch it with you. You don't watch it with me. Yeah, you do. You don't tell these people that you watch it with me because you ain't supposed to be watching it with me. No, I definitely don't watch it. Yeah, your mother finds out you're watching it with me. We're going to be in trouble. <laughs> as long as you just cover your ears, right? Yeah. You shouldn't watch. Neutral Drop is not 12-year-old appropriate. Uh, typical Raptor love. No, we don't want Napper as a sponsor. Uh, anyways. Um, popcorn. Popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> you smell popcorn? Actually, Mom and Papa, uh, Mama and uh, Evan Tree are making popcorn. They want to know if, uh, uh, what was it, what was it? they want to know if you're going to be a mechanic. No. Woo woo. <laughs> Guess who's going to pay to fix their car? <laughs> you. You fit you, you don't make mom pay. I wonder what the neighbors think in the area of the neutral drop burnouts. Uh well down there, Clive, I don't know if you've been to you know New York City. Told me to watch. I'll tell you right now, they didn't see nothing, they don't know nothing. Uh what else we got? <laughs> yeah. Napping, never any parts available. That's what that means. <laughs> What guy did tell me to watch Big Clive or something? Yeah, Big Clive. Yeah, you can get Big Clive up on your phone. Look at that, Big Clive. He's watching you right now. Big Clive, and we're live. Big Clive. Yeah, with a C. Big Clive. Does a lot of fancy stuff. Has a great voice. Very calm, cherub like demeanor. Big Clive. Uh, no, C L I V E, Big Clive, all one word. Oh, it's all one word. Oh, right there he was. There's his mug. Hit the back arrow. <laughs> uh, you messed up. That guy right there, Big Clive. Big Clive. Yeah, yeah, cherub like demeanor. Uh, like nice guy is what it means. Uh, waiting on the gnashing of teeth upstairs. <laughs> See you later, D6. Kids fighting. When do kids not fight? 
Yeah, Big Clive knows his stuff. I don't know why he bothers watching my stuff. I mean, a mediocre elementary in comparison to what uh, Clive does. He's back. Oh, she's back. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, if any of my kids uh, want to be uh, mechanics, you know, I don't care, you know, if it's my daughter or my boys, uh, you know, I would help them, help them along in their journey, but I free certainly college? won't uh, it force it along. So, it'd be like free college or something. Free college. Yeah, you'd be, be teaching us. If I was teaching you. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be kind of like free college. Film is good. Yeah, except I'd, <laughs> I'd probably be a prick. You wouldn't want to work for me. Try don't work for family. You work for your dad. Yeah, how'd that work out? You get your own shop. Oh. <laughs> Ambient knowledge in different areas. Okay, I see, Clive. But it's got to frustrate the bejeekers out of you, like when I'm working on something, and you know, you know what all the angry pixies inside the black mystical boxes we work on. You know, you'd take it out, and, you know, solder on this and solder on that, and dissect it, and you'd draw a diagram because you draw a diagram for everything, and then you could fix it. Where you know, I gotta, you know, toss it in the round file and buy a new one and program it, and or whatever you got to do to it. And, so, you know, there's that. I envy you in that in that respect. But anyways. <laughs> Where's the Napa sign on my shop? Out front. You guys have probably seen it in every test drive video I've ever done. It's Napa Auto Care. Not a sponsor. I should put a hashtag not a sponsor on it just so people know. <laughs> um, yeah, working with family will demonstrate why lions eat their young. I mean, that's the truth. <laughs> Uh, how can you envy my diagnostic skills, Clive? It's all diagnostic thought process. And if you can fix everything that you fix or tear it apart and find the root cause of a problem, it's no different doing it on a, you know, an LED light bulb circuit or a uh, personal massager uh, or whatever else you take. I might have got you confused with the AVE channel there. Um, <laughs> at any rate, the diagnostic thought process is the same. You know, you see the problem understand the system and how it works, come up with a logical thought process of, uh, give me that, let it go. Uh, you come up with a logical thought process of, uh, you know, what you're going to do, know your tests, what you expect to see, execute them, take yourself from this big funnel down to a little pinpoint, test it, boom, make the call, fix it. And, oh, I thought you put it around your tongue. I was going to have to show them how to use this thing. <laughs> so that's uh, that's what I would say. <laughs> Houston, you don't want to know about that one. We haven't been working on any of those, but they did on the AVE channel. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say your, you know, your thought process on anything, whether you're trying to diagnose a, you know, dryer at home or, you know, refrigerator or anything, even your life in general, how it works, what's the problem, how does it work? You know, what can I test? What do I expect to see? And, you know, and then carry on. So, uh, whoa, why is there a Napper sign on my shop? Because I'm a Napper Auto Care Center, not a sponsor. Do I talk to myself when I'm not filming most of the time? You do. So, yeah. Yeah, I think Clive. BigClive.com would be an excellent diagnostician on a car. Uh, he can read a diagram, understand it, and uh, which I can't in some cases because some of them show the inner jiggly bits of uh, inner workings of the ECM, which case if I don't understand the symbol or what it does, you know, what a shunt is versus what a, you know, a resistor is or what a shunt is versus what a fuse is, you know, let's look it up. Let's figure out how it works. Okay, here's how it works. How do you test it? You know, do that quick test. You know, move on where you could look at that and be like, oh, that's this. It works like this. And, you know, you got diagram. This where it goes here. And, you know, bada bing, bada boom. You know, you figure it out. Uh, master problem solver. That is Lon Willis. Yeah, I think he's the one that gave me that sign. Does something with snap on. If I remember correctly, my memory is kind of short. Uh, scanner Danner is awesome. Also, totally agree. Way better than I'll ever be. Hands down. Um, 
Someone's in it. Why don't I get a drone? I do have a drone. I've got an Altel drone, actually. So, which is pretty fun to fly. Don't know how it works in conjunction with uh, doing videos here. It's fun to just fly around. Astros or Nationals? I don't know what that means. If it has to do with sports, the Bears. Um. <laughs> I'd make a great electronic technician. This comes from somebody who worked on the Titan II missile system. You don't want me working on a missile system. I get way too tempted to be like, let's see how this baby flies. Uh, is your mother almost done? We've been on here forever. Oh, she has to do the back. Oh, my gosh. Well, she, yeah, she. It's 9 o'clock at night on a school night. I got all my homework done. And the bears. <laughs> right? You like the bears? Nope. You need a haircut, bro. I know. I was going to do a mom. won't get anyone. Mom won't cut. You got to get over here. No. Come on. Your mother cut your hair? Yeah. That's right. Oh. I remember when she first started cutting your hair. It was 12 <laughs> years ago when you were just baby Gavin. And uh, you used to get the same haircut I get. It's called number one on the clipper. <laughs> remember that? You had a big old melon head, though. You still got a big head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, she has adapted very well, uh, Big Clive, to uh, the hair cutting. Uh, she does well because the boys like to have this, I call it wing. You know, they, <laughs> they put hairspray in it, and then they do, like, the flip-up thing. Right? What's it called? I don't know. I don't know. But she does a pretty dang good job. Uh, so... You're a number two blade. I'm a number one blade just because my hair grows like hair. You know, it grows quick. Um, my hair grows too quick. Oh, so your wife cuts your hair too, Schmitty? Uh, yeah, Mrs. O oh, Flipper. Yeah, they do the do the thing that you do. The, I don't the, do hey, that. what's up, girl? I don't do that. What's up, girls? I don't do that. Well, the hair is a mess, man. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> your brother does. He's know. always like. My friend Brian does. He has his hair like down there, like here. Yeah. Like, just Clicks out. His mom says if he sees him touching it one more time, he'll she'll shave it. You know what I do? I say if your hair is going to be that long, wear a dress. <laughs> All right? Mine's so. on my face. At least you don't have a man bun. You don't want a man bun, do you? No. Good. Hey, some of these people got man buns. Yeah, I don't think your hair should touch your ears, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. Mm, I can touch my you know why? Because I've had the same haircut since I was, I don't know, ever since I. Oh, I can touch my ears. I remember one time though, going to the barber. There used to be a barber lived right over here. Um, gosh, I don't remember the lady's name, but anyhow, I was a young kid, young buck, just about like you. And my mother, she takes me to the barber. It's a lady hairdresser. I guess they would call it hairdresser, not a barber. It's a lady. And I go in there, Bev. Her name was Bev. That's all, I remember her last name now. Uh, anyhow, I go see Bev. And this house over here, it's got slate siding on it. Really neat place. Uh, you don't see slate siding much. Uh, in either case, I go in there. And I'm a little nervous, you know, because we got the sprays and you're sitting in the chair and you got the apron on. I was probably younger than you. She assured me that under no circumstance that these clippers that she had could cut me. And, uh, you know, sticks her finger out. Blah, 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 blah. These things can't cut you, son. So she's doing my deal. And she comes around my hair. She goes to do the ear thing. Boom! Blood! Cuts my ear. Bleeding like a stuck pig. I was like, I knew it. I told you. And I knew my mother tricked me. And here this lady damn near chops my ear off. I mean, it was just a little nick. But still, she cut my ear. You have a scar? Nope. But I started cutting my own hair after that. So, that's that. Think about it before you go. Uh, really yeah, see, she cut her son with the... Uh, Clippers too. So they'll get you. Clippers. And never believe a hairdresser. Of course I still paid Andrew. Of course I still paid. I didn't pay. I was too young to pay. My mother paid. But I knew it. Yeah, a straight razor. So the other lady up here, Susie, uh, that I like to go see. Sure. She uh she cuts my hair and she uses a straight razor, but she uses uh 
you know, I just go in and have a buzz. You know, I'll be here like, hey, Susie, can I come up and get my haircut? You know, and uh, she has a straight razor, does the whole, you know, deal, but it has a guard on it so she can't, you know, off me. Uh, anyways, I only go there when I'm feeling lazy, like usually in the in the winter time because uh, when I cut my hair, I do it outside, grab an extension cord, plug it into the house, walk out in the yard, you know, mow it down because otherwise there's hair like all over the bathroom and uh, it makes a mess. So I just do it outside and it gets a little cold to stand out there in your skivvies in the winter time and cut your hair. <laughs> I can't repeat that, but that's funny. Um, oh, the Floby. Who remembers the Floby? Did, did Schmitty, did somebody, somebody just said something about the Floby. <laughs> you guys remember that infomercial, you know, when you're up late at night trying to look at the Naughty Channel through all the static. And ultimately, you couldn't see anything, so you ended up on infomercials, and they had the Floby. That was like the clippers on the vacuum. Oh, wow. You used to own one? I bet you did, Schmitty. I, you, you probably still have that. Come on, you still got a CRT TV and a VCR, dude. I know you still got that Floby. If you do, uh, I would like to see it. Wait a minute. They, do they still make the Floby? I got to check. Somebody Google this. You guys hold right on. Floby. Do they still make the Floby? Uh, there's the infomercial for it. Yeah. Floby on Amazon. Just a minute, folks. I can't see you, but you can see. <laughs> they still make the freaking Floby. 130 bucks. What is it? It's a haircut and vacuum cleaner apparatus. Oh. You, uh, well, self-cutting hair kit cuts nine different hair lengths. Blue, $150 on the Amazon. I did not know they still made the freaking Floby. How much is that one? Look at this. Look at this. It's got over 1,000 reviews. 4.3 stars. Let's read some of the one-star reviews for the people. Uh, let's see. This guy writes, Colleen Jameson. My father had a Floby for 10 years, then it died. We replaced it with this one, and it's already died after a few months. Wow. Yeah, right. This guy, Chris Ganilo, worked for four months. Next customer, Junk. Uh, let's see. Stuck with this junk, completely useless. Don't bother. There's always the one star people. Let's jump right to the five stars. Let's read the people that have some satisfaction with the floor. Wow, that one is that one is freaking long. That one is long. That one is long. We want like the short ones. Um, anyways, a lot of satisfied people. Like 40 best invention years. ever. That's what I'm saying. Let's close out here so we can talk to the people. Wow, 130 bucks. Uh, still, uh, still pretty popular item. And I could uh, use that for my winter time. However, Susie only charges fifteen dollars. Of course, I tip her five bucks, so it's a twenty dollar bill. Uh, you know, to go up and just have you know Susie cut my hair, and of course, you get to uh, you know hang out with all the other ladies. A place called Touch of Beauty. It's up here in Boca. Mm. Touch of Beauty. But some some man, one of my customers, put a uh, sticker on the window that says "And Handsomeness." So we didn't feel ashamed to go in there. It's like dormant for haircuts. Yeah, except if Dorman made one, it would scalp you. <laughs> and you'd still pay for it. That's the beauty of Dorman. We all know it's junk. We all still buy it. We all still get pissed off and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> the Dorman Floby. <laughs> Dorman Floby. Take your hair out by the roots. That would be the slogan. That makes sense. Nice. Uh, lithium ion jump pack versus the old JNC 660. You got to have them both. Here's why you take the jump pack. Let's say you got a car that's out in your lot. All nader's bad. Uh, battery's dead. You don't want to drag the extension cord out there in the charger and charge up the batteries and start driving in. You want to throw a jump on it. Boom. Get it in the shop. Battery spank completely smoked. You throw the lithium ion on it. Boom. Fired up. As soon as you take it off, thing dies. Lithium ion shuts off after, let's say, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, shuts off. So if you can get your car inside that quick, uh, you know, you're good. What you do in that case is use your JNC because that's just a wet cell battery inside the magical box they overcharge you for. You put that under the hood, throw your jumpers on it, fire it up. Now you can pull it inside. Uh, so that's why I say I have both. Or let's say you want to power something. You want to power your smoke machine. 
uh, you know, something that's sitting on your tool cart with 12 volts, you got to use your JNC 660. Uh, you can't use your little, you know, high, um, you know, super capacitor jump starter. <laughs> uh, wow, I can't believe they still make the flow beat. Thanks for reminding me of that, Schmitty. Uh, me? Send me a text oh, later please. so I uh, remember to buy one. You're going to buy one. A flow beat? All right, son. You look at that. Look at that wave. You got that. If I had the flow bee, I could like I could flow that thing around like perfect. You'd need some Aquanet though. What's that? Uh, it's hairspray. You don't know what Aquanet is? No. I use some random stuff to find the cover. You use what? The stuff I find in the closet. I don't even know Just what it's whatever stuff you find in the closet. Yeah. You need a vacuum. Oh no, I got I got a vacuum. Messages. I got a vacuum. I can totally uh he says you you know you remind him of Zach Morris. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Schmitty just texted me, says buy a Floby. <laughs> I'm gonna Schmitty, you don't you wait. We will do a live on screen Floby and we'll give it our own review. I've done drug tests online. I will do a Floby online. Uh so you don't know what Aquanet is and you don't know what uh who Zach Morris is. No. So you're telling me you don't know who Lisa Turtle is? A.C. Slater. <laughs> you don't know A.C. Slater? You're making these up. There's like Turtle and A.C. No. Yeah. I, I know who. Ask these people. Am I making up the fact that Lisa Turtle is a real they're person? All, they're all going to agree with How you. about Screech? You don't know Screech? Not from the 60s. It's not from the 60s. I wasn't that? even born then. Ah, Zach Morris, he he was kind of a jerk, but uh, Kelly liked him, and that's all there was to it. When you wake up in the morning and your alarm gets out of order and you don't think you'll make it on time. Oh, no, it's not. When I wake up in the morning and my alarm's out of order, I don't think I'll make it on time. You know that song? Yeah. Man, it used to be like the best. It was a great show. Oh, he turned into a jerk in real life? Oh, yeah, Mr. Balding. So, um... That was a great after-school show. Back when they used to have after-school shows, before it was... Screech was a nerd. He was a nerd. Uh, but yeah, it was a TV show from the great 90s show. called Say by the Bell. Uh, great show. Fantastic show. Yeah. But yeah, Kelly. Mm-mm-mm. You know what I'm typing? Mm-mm-mm. Uh, they, they still play... Well, we don't have TV, so... Uh, the RoboCut haircutting system. The dark, the dark hair girl, like with the curly hair. So you had Kelly. She was a long. She had the long, straight hair. Uh, who was that? Kelly. Oh, Schmitty. Google who was the cast on uh, Say by the Bell. What was it? What was it people's names? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was Kelly. Jesse. Was it Jesse? Are you sure, Jeremy? Was it Jesse? AC Slater. Because there was the one AC Slater was trying to always, you know, take to the, uh, you know. It was it Jesse Kelly Kapowski? Jesse. Jesse was the blonde. Let me see. Kelly Kapowski. Kelly? Who was the cast in the scene? Oh, that's the guy. Maybe you're into the dudes, Smitty. <laughs> Tiffany. Tiffany. Was it Tiffany? Let's see. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, he, that's AC Slater. But, uh, or, yeah, that's AC Slater. And uh, yeah, Dustin Diamond, you know, he played Screech. Uh they were meanie. She was uh Jeffrey. Wow. Yeah, anyhow. Amber Tiffany was Kelly. I don't know. They're all I don't know their off screen names. Jesse Spano, maybe. I don't know. Tiffany. But uh yeah, anywho. What uh Amber. What do we got here? Let's see. What do I think of the old one carry band? I like them. They've made me a lot of money over the years. <laughs> These are junk. What? Carry bands? Yeah. <laughs> Where the car talk at? We've already talked about the car talk about two hours ago. We're two hours and 20 minutes into this. Whoa. Um, so I think we probably ought to wrap it up. What do you say? You cold? You got pee? No. What's the problem? Smooth. Oh. Uh, let's see. I arrived late. 
<laughs> yeah. Ethanol and gasoline makes him a lot of money. Well, Schmidt, you know, I'm a good steward to my small engines. I only use Starzon enzyme treatment, fuel treatment. I use that in my small engines. Uh, you know, it's a stabilizer. It uh, has something fancy to do with the ethanol. Run it in all my small engines. Keep it in my toolbox. Oh, this hairspray. So, not a sponsor. <laughs> There's something comes with can, too. Oh, that's Deoxid D5. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Deoxid D5. <laughs> not a sponsor. It's hairspray. Fantastic straw. You want me to spray it in your hair? Oh. So. Yeah, your dad swears by that stuff. And there's a local guy here, small engine shop. He swears by it, too. I was thinking about doing a video. I got to put away my... Uh, small engine stuff we'll call it you know the weed whacker uh lawnmower uh chainsaws and stuff like that and i was thinking about doing a video but it's really not much uh, i'm not a big engine fuel stabilizer treatment dump it in run it through let it sit you know go for the winter Chevy uh, take them tip them upside down dump all the gas out of it start them up let them run till they're empty park it that's it <laughs> I'm not a Bears uh, fan. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, we can buy non ethanol fuel here. It's about a buck more a gallon. 91 octane, non ethanol. It's like three something a gallon, 330 a gallon, I think. <laughs> Wacko. Um, yeah, yeah, we've got not, uh, the only place down here that sells non ethanol is a, a gas station called Triple K. It is not what you think. Uh, this is a, I don't want to say we have a lot of ethnic diversity here. Uh, why on earth a guy would name his business the Triple K? Uh, I don't want to say it's beyond me, but if you're from an out of town location and you come here, you'd be like, what the, what's he thinking? Uh, you know, uh, it's the names of his daughters. They all start with K. Uh, probably should have thought that out a little bit more uh, before naming your business after that. But, you know, around here, you know, it's a little different. Uh, anyhow, I would have never done that. That is super, uh, <laughs> could be misinterpreted. We'll just leave it at that. So, but yeah, they've got 91 octane there. So, yeah, Triple K, they sell, it's not Sunoco, Sitco. I think it's a Sitco station. Um, That's for sure. Yeah. Project Farm. Uh, oh, Project Farm is absolutely a great channel. Give them a shout out. Woo -woo. Shout out, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you just throw a gang sign? You just throw a gang sign? I only have Instagram. <laughs> oh. And Snapchat. So. And TikTok. And Facebook. Yeah. No, no, we can get, uh, uh, like I say, I think, yeah, none of the other places sell uh, non ethanol. He is not my offspring. Can you do the, you know, the elevator, like, you know, do, do it Who's like, that? like where you just like the elevator, you know, Who's the elevator? like when you're like standing by a window, they're like, oh, I could take the stairs, but I think I'll take the elevator. You know, that move right there, you know, you, you didn't even watch. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's the elevator. <laughs> yeah. You know, cause then you could do the stairs, but you walk down the steps. Oh, I got my way. <laughs> Well, I take the steps when I have a perfectly good canoe. You know? <laughs> <laughs> How do you not know these tricks, man? Oh, Project Farm just, yeah, I haven't seen his uh, fuel stabilizer video yet. I'd be curious to know how he did that. Uh, No, he said goofballs. Oh, <laughs> so he said golf balls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, anyways, uh, do I like pro wrestling? Uh, not anymore. You used to pro wrestle? No, I wasn't a pro wrestler. I'd watch pro, like watch pro wrestling. It was like a soap opera. I didn't realize that until later on in life that there was like, you know, a storyline behind it. On that... um, <laughs> your thing done. Uh, I'm pro wrestling, you know, like with The Rock and the McMahons. That's all fake. I know it's, it's fake, but it's like a soap opera, man. And, and you, they had all their oh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, yeah, Hawk Hogan. That was back in the I used to have those action figures, Smitty. 
uh, back in the day, Superfly Snooker. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't know if I ever thought it was real big Clive, but yeah, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Macho. Sergeant Slaughter. Oh yeah. I remember all them, but you know, when I got, uh, when I got older, um, uh, we would watch stuff perhaps when I wasn't such a good individual and used mind altering items, uh, we'd watch it. Then I found out like, you know, there's a soap opera behind this. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I used to watch it and things like that anyways. There's that one. What are you doing? Cast the pole. Huh? Somebody else is back there. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Oh, I can't tell you more about that, Clive. There is one of my children here. And someday, he might think he's going to get away with something. However, what? he won't. Anything. Anything that you think you're going to do when you get older. I've done it more than likely. Like what? Like anything. You have neutral drop the car? Yes, I've neutral drop the car. I can teach you how to make the perfect J-hook burnout. Uh, you, you I, can, I don't even want to teach you this stuff. I'm, I'm going to try all of it. No, you won't. You're not going to get away with Vanessa. Wow. Get over here. Come on. It's late. Chip, chop, chip. Come on. Our child. Do you think? Child. Do you think that he's going to get away with anything if he grows up and perhaps? I have no life now. What do you need? What? You have your own life now. Come over here, woman. <laughs> oh, you responded to the, come over here, woman? That you know what I mean? Like if, uh, no. you know, he grew up and he's like, oh, I'm going to. Do drugs with my buddy, or I'm gonna smoke a cigarette. Or... <laughs> you're gonna, you're just, you're you're completely screwed. What? What you say? <laughs> Papa shoes. And so nothing wrong with that. <laughs> See, to be Eric, honest, the bottom. Let's, let's change the <laughs> oh, subject. Yeah, we did. So, did you know that the Floby is still made? It's only 150 dollars. He's gonna buy one. Do you remember the Floby? He's gonna do it on my hair. It's a vacuum. The, the vacuum <laughs> hair cutting thing? Yeah. You've never seen the infomercial? I've seen, I know what you're talking about. So what we need to do is, uh, I told him we could do a live Floby. Uh, On you? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, I don't know, he's been over here. I feel like it's got Tourette's or something. That's um, not bad. Uh, well, no, I, you know, like he's having, <laughs> doing something over here. Um... Yeah, no, we're not gonna flow be your hair. <laughs> My hair? No, but like Gavin's, we'll flow be him. Ow! Uh, How about we flow be you first? Yeah, no, I don't think it'd be a good idea. To... This guy here says he's had a flow be since 1993, and Schmitty, uh, my buddy on here, Schmitty Smithsonian, he's got a flow be. I mean, this guy has got a VCR still, and he's like, oh, I don't have it anymore, is what he's claiming. But I, I know damn well he does. Okay. Oh. Um. On a personal note, yes, it's uh, nine ten. I still got some work to do, and the children need to go to bed. Why are you gonna? Can you be a father? Vanessa, take them what did we bed. talk about the other night? He's as far as you this. and your project in there, and just burning yourself out. And I don't take, remember this conversation. We had this conversation probably because it was like two o'clock in the morning. That was a long time ago. It was like I'm, three days ago. That, that was not three days ago. <laughs> oh my God, no, it wasn't. Yeah, Wall Clippers. Now, Wall, that is a great band, brand of <laughs> Clippers to buy my first set of Wall Clippers. <laughs> years. It lasts <laughs> years. Listen. All right. All right, folks. All right, folks. Cameraman here. <laughs> oh, no. They're never going to want to see me. Take them away. So, uh, gotta, uh, we do got to get rolling here. Uh, the, the queen has spoke. I gotta take the children um, home, uh, feed them all Benadryl, and put them in their beds. This and one needs tell to Mrs. go to o sleep. Oh, that they went to sleep peacefully. I'm gonna uh, dance. No, I will not drug and do some, but I do have to put a little hitch in my giddy up. <laughs> nope. Say goodbye. Goodbye. All right. Now get out of here. He said goodbye. All right, come on. I need my phone. Come on, I gotta. I gotta. Can't live without it. Yeah. What am I supposed to do without my cell phone? I don't know why. Come on, get out of here. I got it. All right. She's she got, she got your phone. Come on.
Go. I don't want it. <laughs> children. Anyways, uh, I gotta get home. Gotta have to take all the children home. It's tundra time. Head home. Drive through the roundabout. Uh, my kids like it when I go through the roundabout because we have a new roundabout now in the middle of nowheres, and it's wicked fun because you can pull some serious G's around it. It's a super tight. And my kids are like, oh, this is dumb, this is dumb. Until I showed them how fun it was. Head out the window. Whee! The whole way around. Pretty much up on two wheels. So if you have a roundabout where you live, do it. It's great. We can do it here because there's no other traffic on it ever. And, uh, you know, you just whip around or you just drive straight across it. Uh, because they cut the center apron down pretty low. So you can just boom, boom. That's kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, it gives you a chance to Tokyo Drift and, uh, you know, pin all the kids up against the side of the car, except for the ones that are wearing their seatbelt, which they all are. But uh, yeah, we're going to hit the roundabout. We're going to blow some UEs around that baby at, as fast as we possibly can and have a little fun and uh, go home and get everybody in bed. So you guys go home, get in bed, go down there in that comment box, leave me a question, comment, criticism, or concern, even though there isn't one there now, but there will be later. And if you manage to stick it out for the two hours, 30 minutes, and 59 seconds that we're at already, well, by golly, leave me a comment. If not, uh, you know, whatever. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, now I say it. Thanks for watching. And end stream. Where's the button? Oh, this is getting weird. And then that.